out. Welcome everyone to Collingwood Public Library's Paint Night. We have Jason Alexander with us today and you're going to be attending from our YouTube channel. Um, so hopefully you have your paint all set up and the image was written in the comments below and all your supplies. So welcome everyone and welcome Jason, here you go. Hi everybody, how are you? Welcome, thank, thank you very, very much. Uh, Lauren, thank, thank, thank you very much for, for being the host. Uh, we'll get right to it. We have a, a wonderful Im image here. Um, it's a winter scene uh, and we're going to be painting it. Oops, did I just turn off for a second? Am I still on? Nope, you're still good. I just turned myself off. That's okay. what happened. Great. Go ahead. So it doesn't matter. Great. I can still see myself. Uh, so I have a nice Im image here and I'm sure you all have it in front of you. Uh, it's quite nice because it has a magical sunset. This is actually what happens when the sky is like a curtain over our head and we have a little gap in the sky and the sun is setting through the gap and all that light, all that reflective light is coming up through that gap, going across the snow, reflecting into the trees, going across a little part of the open water. It's quite romantic. We all like romantic art. Uh, and we're gonna do it step by step right here, uh, right now. So the first thing I'm gonna talk to you about is the brush. Uh, I suggest you use a number, some of you are painting pretty small. Uh, some of you are painting what, 12 by 12s? Um, so I would suggest something small, like a zero, a two uh, to start off with. We're gonna pretend we're doing a watercolor first. And uh, because we're gonna put the color down later on, first thing we wanna do is kind of do a water sketch, it's called. Where we sketch everything out, kind of what we want uh, to show. Uh, there's a lot of information there. And uh, we don't really need to show everything. Uh, the class is limited in size. Uh, I think they have to be done by 845, uh, just so um, Lori can walk up over there. She's directly across the street from my school as well, which is kind of interesting. Uh, we're both occupying Sim Simcoe Street to, to tonight. It's a real art community of Collingwood. And uh, so I'm very happy to be here. Anyways, it's been quite so. Anyway, so, um, so it's really interesting, this view. Uh, we have a really close up view of a whole bunch of trees, a little river, and then we have this nice line of trees. We're gonna kind of sketch things in. When we're working on sketches, we actually do the, the front part first, and then we move on to the back end. And it's, it's quite interesting how that happens. So I'm gonna, I, one of the colors I suggested that we use was a transparent red oxide. Um, the reason why it's transparent is because it holds up well in water. Um, the more water, um, the better it spreads and flows. And it's really, really nice paint to, to use on a sketch. Um, the lights and darks are very, very dramatic. So it's nice to have this, this color here. Anyway, so I'm just going to uh, mix it up. So when we pour the paint onto our palette, I'm using these plates because I can put one plate down, grab another plate, and never run out of space. Um, you, know, you put your paint down, it's called a pile. Then you take the paint and you flow it over and you make a pond. Now our ponds are gonna be extremely wet, okay? So the color will, will flow. So wet, here, that'll, this is a piece of, uh, you should also have a, something beside you, uh, a white piece of paper so you can do some test strokes and you can see the colors that you're using. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful tone. Um, the more water you add, the lighter it is. So those people who don't have the transparent red oxide, I would use a little bit of black and a little bit of red and just add the two colors together so it's mostly red, a little bit of black, uh, and just add some water so it's moist. And you'll get something pretty close to, 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 to that as well. Um, maybe keep a little bit more on the red side than the black side, of course, um, but that would do it as well. So the first thing we're gonna look at is, is the foreground. What is right in front of us? Because if we place that foreground right, everything else can be falling in behind it. So what I see is I see we have a pack of trees starting right about there at the bottom. The horizon line is pretty low. It's about there, lower than half. The trees actually cross over the mid part and end up over here. So I'm gonna sketch all this, this in. The first thing I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna do the major tree. There's one big, huge tree here that I'm gonna put down. Whoops, I don't know where that went. Give me a second. <laughs> Welcome to the world of live TV. Uh, give me a second here. I can hook it up like that. There you go. 
And I'll, I'll put a piece of cardboard behind that. But as, as you can tell, we have one huge piece of tree here. So we're going to put that guy in, but we're going to put the center of it. And he kind of goes right up the canvas and he goes right out, right? And I, I just did one line, no nut stop, has a couple arcs, it's arcing a bit, it goes right up, okay? So I'm drawing the major trees in the front. I'm gonna do another tree over here. He comes up and it goes around and he goes out. I'm pretending he's something in, in there, okay? And then I have another tree between these two trees. I'm just looking at the big guys and he comes up and he does almost the same. But I'm making sure that my negative space, and I'm gonna grab a bigger brush. I'm gonna make sure that my negative space, and I added a little bit of darkness to it just so you can see it, is all a little different. And now this is the other tree I'm gonna put in. Now they're pretty dark, so you can go pretty dark. I just added the red oxide. You can add some black and starting putting the, the tree up close in. And there he is. Goes right down and all that black down there. There are a couple of holes where there's some grayish snow that we're gonna put in next. Okay. And I'm gonna stop for questions soon. Just let me just let me carry on for a second. So most trees are thin at the top ish and thicker at the bottom. So I'm gonna make sure that this tree goes a little bit thicker at the bottom. I'm using my guide, my guideline through the center, and this guy too. He goes right up. If you notice, I'm painting with my shoulder. I'm not playing with my wrist. I'm not doing sketches. I'm doing complete lines. Um, I could do the odd sketch, but I'm looking at my edge and how wide I want that tree to go. And then there's a whole bunch of leaves and branches over here, but we're gonna simplify it. So I'm just gonna do some lines. Now these lines, I see I'm keeping them thin because I, I might actually make them a little bit thicker later, but I'm just gonna keep them thin. It's a whole bunch of stuff going on. There's bush too. I'm just putting some texture down, okay? So now, we have this big chunk of snow coming across here, right? And we have a bush over here somewhere. And then we have the edge of the water and we have it kind of cut back again, okay? Now, depending upon where you cut that back, I'm, I'm actually not painting across. I'm painting up and down. I should have mentioned that before, sorry. The reason why I'm painting up and down is so it forces me to change the dimensions. It makes it more my own painting. Uh, and it, this is a beautiful photograph, and I wouldn't want to take anything away from it. I want to do a painting version of the photograph. So I went up and down. So uh, those of you that haven't quite started yet, I know you're still waiting for me just to start, say, go, kind of, which is great. Um, uh, and I'm almost going to be seeing go very, very soon. You can always turn the canvas upright and paint that way, even though the reference is cross. It's a great exercise. I do it all the time. Uh, it forces you to kind of think a little bit out, more out of the box. It also reminds you that this is a view and that these views can be changed because it's, it's going through the brain and out the fingers. There's a magic there and you want that magic to flow um, as well. And by changing these two dimensions is one of the ways of doing that. Uh, referencing too much is actually will slow you down from getting a good flow. And this class is all about painting, not fast, but fairly quickly. Anyway, so when we start, first started off doing our sketch, we do the immediate close part, which I just mentioned. So I just kind of measured out where that river is going to go. Okay. I went past the halfway point of the canvas just to make it a little bit more interesting. So that way, a lot of action is happening over here on this side versus a lot of energy here. So to kind of balance each other out. And I'll show you that just right now. So now let's say the river is going in, right? So there is a little bit of a snow line going across here. And then that river, it kind of goes out straight a bit and then it kind of arcs and it comes around and it gets beaten up by all these different ice and stuff in there doing its stuff, okay? And then it's, it has its darkest edge too. So I'm just gonna kind of show how that's flowing a bit. I'm just gonna do a little bit of a wash just so I get some color in there. But I'm also gonna try to recognize where the highlights are, not put too much color where the absolute yellow highlights are. I'm just gonna put a little bit of a wash in there, okay? So those of you that wanna start now, please go ahead and start. Um, I'm, I'm gonna, just gonna keep, keep on going. If people want me to answer any questions, please type in your, 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 your questions. Lori will come back on. Um, uh, yeah.
Okay, so I'm doing the river right now, and then I'm going to look at, you know, the next moving my way up the, 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 the painting. I'm going to look at the horizon line before the tree line, and that comes right across there. Okay, it's like a river or a frozen lake. There is a chunk of land in the middle there too. Uh, you could put it in if you want. You don't have to. Uh, I might just put a little bit of a dot dot dash dash kind of going across. Uh, and then we have this tree line here, which is coming by. You see how lately I'm putting it in. Now trees grow up, they grow land to sky because they're trying to grab that sun. Um, so when we're sketching in our tree line, I'm going to be going up and down a lot. Okay. Now there is a bigger hole around that sun, which I'm going to be very careful with. So when it comes down to where that sun is going to go, and I put my sun here, maybe I should move it. No, I kind of like it there. Well, uh, I might I might move it over a bit. But I'm not going to do a circle of the sun and say the sun's going there because I want this canvas to be really, really fresh. Because when that yellow hits that fresh canvas, it's very, very nice. So please don't do a circle and say the sun's going here right now in this dark color. That would be a no no. Anyway, so here we are. I'm just going to show where, hey, I'm going to move the sun over to here. So I'm just going to take it easy and put my dark, that dark tree line underneath the sun and decide later if I bring it up. The sun somewhere over there. I'm being very careful. I'll make these decisions later. If I'm not sure, I'm just going to carry on. I'm not going to sweat the little things yet. If I'm not sure, they might influence a later de de decision. Painting is all about making quick decisions and moving on. You notice how I'm painting. I'm not stroking. I'm just pushing that paint around. It's called surface blending. And you see, I can jump over to here. I'm just kind of sketching out where that tree line is. How bulky is that darkness behind the trees over in this side? Oops. Okay. And, uh, again, there's my pond. Okay. Tree line. Going across here. Okay. Yes, there are some higher trees in, in that tree line, but right now I don't really care. Okay. And I'm shrinking things down a bit. I got a little bit of a bush over here. This whole side here is all shaded. So I'm going to put a little bit of the Shade transparent red in there, okay? Just a bit, just so I can see it, okay? It's like, it's like making a watercolor. That goes over. A lot of purple in here too. See a lot of purple in there. Okay, so that's pretty well the sketch. Well, you know, I think we should actually do a little bit more on the trees now. Um, let me see. So now I got my brush. Uh, by the way, I'm painting 18 by 24. I was actually going to go up to 40 by 40. <laughs> I thought we went really big. You should see it. But uh, I, uh, I don't know. I, I want to be safe. So here we are. Uh, now, there's a couple branches sticking out over here that I'm just going to sneak in there. You know, just kind of stick in there. So they're just like I can make these decisions later. It's all about when are you going to make your, your big decisions? I, I, I had to put some major. A uh, massive tree in. I have to put all the trees in to actually see how to build from those points. So it's one step, another step. Um, it gets easier and easier the more you put up. You can start to see how the painting's starting to develop. I don't need to put too much in there just to recognize from a design point of view that my limbs might come out to here. Oh, you know. So the next thing we're going to work on. I'm going to let that dry just for, just for a sec. Okay. And we're going to let that dry. Um, we're going to change our palettes or get a fresh palette out and we're going to put some yellow down. Uh, so when I put the yellow down and I get a big bucket of water here that I, I go to. Uh, so I have all that water that I can play with and change my mind with. I also have a rag uh, that I, I, I work with. Um, I have several rags. So if I put too much water on, on the brush, I can just take my rag and take the water off. Uh, the brush is very interesting. I'm using a flat. Uh, most brushes is either a filbert, which has a rounded edge on it, or a bright, which is a short flat. Um, the short, the brights I find um, die the fastest because they're so close to the crown uh, or the fernal around the brush um, that holds all those hairs in, in, in place. The hairs are actually placed, so it, it, it's like a wedge. It wedges up, okay? Um, 
And that's what's so special about these brushes. When you buy a house brush, it has a flat surface on, on, on it. it. It was just thrown in there and tightened down. Where this is actually, the hairs are actually placed. And that's an art brush. Uh, it goes to a wedge. So that wedge allows us to do lines this way or wide of the brush, make shapes, get some edges in there. Uh, it's quite an interesting tool that's developed. And oh my gosh, this is thousands of years old man's been using a brush. So probably, you know, ballpoint pen is brand new compared to this. Anyway, so let's go back to topic. I'm letting it dry a bit. <laughs> so here we go. We're going to go into our lemon yellow, our light yellow, our yellow with a little bit of white in it. In it. It's pretty white in the center there. So I'm also going to uh, pour a little bit of yellow on my palette too, and I'll show you both. You probably won't see the white on my palette. I'm using titanium white. Uh, I like the golden white. I like the tri-art white. Um, I don't like Amsterdam basic colors. There are certain brands I, I, I would never sell. I don't sell Li Li Liquitex anymore in our store um, uh, just because it's, it doesn't have any quality control. I can't tell what color it is. Um, I would really sell better paint that's like tri-art. Like you can't beat it. It's made in Canada. It's Canadian. You know, there's not every brand has amazing colors. So it's hard to be a loyal to one brand. And you really shouldn't because you can mix and match them. The recipe for acrylic paint is actually 36 I I items and they haven't changed um, except for cad cadmium has been replaced in some uh, and zinc white has been re re replaced and there's another white that's been replaced as well that I'll remember later on. Anyway, so, but it's an old form, form formula. So every country in the world has their own acrylic paint and in Canada is tri right now. Stevenson's was acrylic paint we used to have as well, but it doesn't exist anymore. So anyway, so here I have my, my brush is nicely clean. I'm gonna do a test. I have some white paper beside me. I'm gonna go into the yellow from the side and make a pawn with, with, my, with my, my yellow, okay? Uh, I'm gonna make sure it's nice and wet so I can change my mind. <laughs> and I'm going to pre pretend the sun is right about there. Okay, I just did little lines because I'm pulling, I'm pulling these lines back just so I get the start of, just so my brain knows what's going on. Okay, and I'm going to continue to pull it back as I run out of paint. And go up and down, up and down a bit, go back a bit. I'm going to be putting white, oops, I'm a little bit wet there. And then we'll, you know, it goes to the orange anyways. So I'll be careful, I'll be mind to set it up. And I'm just going to keep on spreading it. This is called dry brush when you run out of paint kind of but you're just pushing the paint on the surface. Uh, my attitude is you don't have to work opaquely. You can, you can let a little bit of paint on the surface. That's quite okay. Um, you don't have to have the whole paint covered in, in thick layers of, 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 of coat paint. And actually, in some occasions, um, the thicker you go, uh, the worse it is because it's, um, it actually um, shines. It looks like it's plastic paint. So. The other thing too is if I want to remove something, I have a little bit of tree in there. I can wet it, come back, go over to it and just remove a bit of it. And I don't mind that because there is a lot of orange there. I'm going to have to but I don't know if you folks can see that, but that's where my yellow's going. I'm going to go a little heavier. All right. All right, I can wipe it. I got my rag, go right across the edge there. I can always put white on top of it and comes right across. Okay. I got my, my good morning look, okay, up yeah, there. So the clouds in here are actually very orange. We'll be putting those in next. Very soon, okay. And then I'm gonna grab some, some white. Well, that's still sitting. And I'm gonna put some white into here with a little bit of yellow on top. I'm gonna put some white into there. Kind of make a circle a bit, just so I know when I cover some of that canvas, so I know when I go to paint that dark, edge there. Okay. Good. Okay. Now I'm also going to take my, my yellow and my white and I mix the two together. And there's some yellow on the snow here that we're actually going to make it kind of peachy as well, but not too much. And there's a little bit of peachy yellow here, a lot of peach in that snow. So I'm just going to put a little bit of wash it across the snow a bit. And then I'm also going to take some yellow because there's yellow in the water and it's coming directly from so I'm gonna go right from the sun straight down and I'm gonna do these interesting shapes 
that I'm going to make make up now because, and then it gets a little tanned over here. It's with the orangey over here. Right. So I hope. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm not always kind of nervous that the camera doesn't show that. But, you know, there, there you go. Okay. Okay. Great. So I'm going to take my red or my transparent red oxide that I'm using. I'm gonna mix it in with some of my yellow that I just added. So I got my transparent red, my, uh, my yellow, and I'm gonna mix, take a little bit of the red, and I mix it in to my plate with the yellow. I'm gonna to try to get a dirty orange. It's a rusty orange. I can go more yellow, I can go more rusty reddish. And I'm not gonna to use too much of this. I'm just going to kind of, it's kind of in this area here where this cloud is. I'm just gonna put it across. I'm just going to come up. We're also going to put peach in there too. So it's just a little bit in there while I have it in my hand. Okay. And then the sun goes up. I might go a little higher. Jason, we have a question. Yeah, shoot. Um, we were just wondering if the camera could get closer to your canvas or I don't sure. know if that's possible. Ah, yeah. there, the magic of live TV. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Zoom. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry. So I see, I'm just showing where some of that orange, I'm showing the shapes. A little bit of orange coming up around here. You know, we're gonna put blue over top of this too. I'm just describing what's kind of happening. If you sit back and kind of look at it, you kind of see where the color transitions are. You know, I still haven't gone back to my palette yet. I have so much paint on, 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 on the canvas that I can actually just kind of push it around a bit, right? I'm, I'm holding my can, my brush at 90 degrees to the surface. Or I would be if you, if you weren't here, but I'm standing sideways and doing it. Which is an interesting view. You don't normally paint this. But that's like. So, anyways, as you can see, I'm smushing it around and I'm not seeing one spot too much. I'm trying to soften all my edges, just softening up my edges. Okay. Next thing, next thing we're going to do is we mentioned the red. Um, we mentioned uh, on my list of colors. There was primary magenta. I'm using the triart version. Um, I am going to grab another plate because I just want everything to stay clean. Okay, grab another plate. So the magenta, magenta is classified, if you add white to it, you get pink. And when you put pink into blue, it's far better than putting orange into blue. If anyone knows about mixing tones, when, when you mix an orange and a blue, you actually get a gray. With, and a dirty gray, and we use it a lot in landscapes uh, in here. And you can see, if you want to, you can try it, go right ahead. Me, I prefer to see a little bit of pink in, in that blue uh, instead of the orange. Uh, it goes purple, and purple, I, I think, I like a lot. I like it. Anytime, any chance I get to put purple clouds is okay with me. So I'm gonna put some magenta down, uh, preparing for that blue, okay? Now we're gonna be putting the different shades of blue. We're gonna be talking about warm blues and cold blues. And actually, funny thing, that looks like there's a little bit of yellow up in some of these blues up here. So we might even do a little bit of a wash of yellow up there, but we'll talk about that later. Um, anyway, so I'm washing my, my brush in, in the water, same brush. It's like a number six. But in your case, you're, some of you are painting tiny, so it'd be, it'd be a lot less. Okay, I'm gonna put some white. Damn. Damn. Sometimes if you put more, a little bit more light on it too. Okay. Cool. Good. <laughs> it also reflect a lot of light too. Okay, so I got my pink. And my, 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 my magenta, my white, my brush is clean. I'm gonna grab some magenta and the pond, add some white to the edge of the pond, and then work my way in. Now, let's say I wanna add more white. I go to the edge of the pond and I work my way in. It's, it's a way of controlling your mixing. If you take one color and you make a pond and then you just grab the other color and place it right in the middle, which a lot of people do, you're guessing. Uh, this way, you can actually control how much color you add to the pond that you want to react to. Um, anyways, so that's just things I'll be telling you as we move along. 
Uh, I think I think I want the, the, the pink to be a little bit on the light side, just so it's not overpowering. And I'm just going to put it right into here a bit and go soft. And you know, it's clouds, so they're they're doing some crazy stuff. You know, I'm not doing straight lines. I'm kind of going back and forth a bit. I'm thinking fluffy. Um, and actually, if you think fluffy, you'll probably move fluffy. And that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm moving flat. This is my version of fluffy moving. Anyways, and I'm just trying to put down, I'm here, I'm working dry brush. You can add a little bit of water, not too much. Um, if you dump your whole brush in the water, you pull that, you put it on this, you'll have, you'll have drips happening. So I just wet it and take some of the water off, but about half, maybe we'll say half wet. I'm just going to push those around a bit. So I got some color going in here. Good. Okay. So we're gonna let that dry for a second. Have a good look into here. Okay. Let that dry. Okay. And um, let's take some of this pink. Now that we made our pink. And let's put some pink over top of the stone here too. Just a bit. It goes kind of pinky over the edge here a bit. If I put some pink over here, it goes a lot of pink at the edge of this line back here. I'll put some pink in here. And it gets kind of pinky over here. In the middle, the edges are darker pink. And I think it doesn't hurt the, the white or the purple snow or the blue snow going on top. All right, so we can do a lot of the snow back over here and Put some pink down. I'm putting it down as a wash, kind of textured a bit. Yeah. It is easy to paint over. It's a nice base color. We actually don't really normally paint from a white canvas anyways. So what I'm saying is let's put some undercoats down in the shape of in the direction that we are making. Instead of covering everything in an orange or pink color, like you would do with an outdoor landscape. If you're painting in the woods, you're not sure where you're going. So if I go in the woods, I actually go in the woods with a pink uh, canvas uh, or a, flat, a fluorescent canvas. And uh, it's kind of cool to do that. And maybe one day we'll do a class on that. Anyway, so moving on quite along. I'm still putting down my, my washes. It's getting a little bit heavier, but acrylic paint, no one really talks about washes that much. Anyways, we've got some color into here. So it's kind of interesting what's happening where the ice is breaking up. We actually have a different texture. So I'm not going to over exaggerate that. I'm going to under exaggerate that because I don't want it to be overpowering. I just want a simple transition between water and ice. But there are a lot of cross lines here. So I'm putting texture in right now. I'm using my brush in a cross pattern and I'm describing some of these ice. I'm leaving some texture down on the ice. Because it's it's being winded. There's wind probably that's been sweeping across that ice for quite a while. And you can start to see the grooves. It's not flat. Okay. You stepped on it, crunch. Looks it looks like a cold morning, like yesterday, like, like this morning. This is a good time for this painting. Today's an excellent day for this painting. Uh, having it reminds us that the, the color and the you know, in summertime we don't get these colors. You know, we still get the sunsets, but the land goes dark and gray. You know, there's no reflection. You know, you can't reflect all that light. It's, it's that sun, you know. I think that's the beauty of winter actually. So looking at this now, I'm going to come down a bit more with a little bit of my wash. I got some white. Uh, here I am. Okay. I'm going to come down and put a little bit of a lighter um, tone. A pink down in here. And so it has some variation between the pink above. Good. And I know there's some different color variations in there too that we're going to talk about. I'm also going to paint right off to the edge of the canvas. Uh, some some of us stop a little short. 
Um, the canvas actually has a rounded edge on it and it has a rounded edge on both sides all the way around. So when the canvas is pulled around the, the wood stretcher, it doesn't rip. Uh, so they round that edge, but it does make it harder to paint the edges. Um, some people ask me, do you, do you paint the image around the edge? Uh, in some cases, yes, I do. In other cases, I don't. Um, I feel the painting needs just to end. Uh, anyways, so um, yeah. So it really depends on, on the image, I, I think. I think that's the rule of thumb with most art anyways. Uh, you know, uh, there's not one common style really. It depends on what you're trying to say and uh, what you think it needs. Anyways, so I'm just gonna let, I add some a little bit of a whitewash just to lighten up some of my pink. I'm preparing for some of that gray blue in there. I just wanna make sure I don't have any blobs. I have different variations happening. So I'm actually grabbing a little bit of white. I'm just kind of whitening things up. It's a little bit lighter over here too. I know we're gonna put some blue into there. I don't want to go too dark. Well, some parts are pretty dark. Okay, so that, okay. So we can let that dry now. And I'm saying, let's go into the land here and put this, this here in. So that way we can decide what's happening with our sun now. Okay, and we are gonna be doing that next. So we're gonna be going back to all these plates anyways. Uh, what I sometimes do, give me a second. Okay, what I sometimes do, <laughs> I had a class this afternoon, a student, I forgot to bring my, my water spray in, but spray's great. Uh, I can spray these palettes. Uh, there's also um, a couple of products on the market that I do sell as well, not the commercial product, because I like the simple things. I like water and a tube and you spray it and you're good. Um, if I wanted to store this in a, uh, for any great length of time, uh, I could put saran wrap around it. I'd give it a couple sprays, put saran wrap around it, and I put it in the fridge. As long as my fridge doesn't freeze things, as long as it just keeps things nice and cool, uh, that'd be great. As long as you don't freeze it, the paint's great. Um, so I can I can leave, let this live for, for quite a while in the fridge, actually, if it's covered. None of the moisture will leave. It will start to smell a bit, but that's just because the molecules are separating. There is an anti-smell um, medium they add to the paint uh, to stop it from, from smelling. Um, and that's, it needs to be mixed up again. So that, that could happen. So if you put a jar of paint and it smells bad, don't throw it away. It just means it just needs to be mixed up. So I'm just soaking all my palettes. And I'm just going to move, move on to those on the floor. And then the next we're going to talk, talk about, which is very exciting, we're going to talk about uh, this forest back here. It's actually a hilltop, right? So the way that I would, would look at this is uh, these are clouds. This is kind of a hilltop. And this is further back, it looks like. So it comes down. But we, we lose the connection here. Um, there is a little bit of a drop in this line here. But this is definitely a lake. I, um, with another tree line. But I'm gonna simplify it because uh, that's what we do when we do our quick paintings. Uh, we can always do another detail painting later. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people um, would do uh, the same painting three or four times. So um, doing it once doesn't, you know, it's great. Um, so getting into this, we're gonna do, uh, I'm going into the burnt umber uh, or black and red again. Um, and yeah, now that's nice about the burnt umber or a little bit of red in there too. I'm going to use some cad red as well. I'm going to mix it in with the burnt umber or black and red. Um, I want to give it some warmth where I want the warmth. I'm also going to put a little bit of Payne's gray in this too later on after it dries. So this is going to be kind of the undercoat for the, the third coat. The, this is the second coat. The third coat will be another tone. But I also want to have the texture of the woods going on. Okay, so I'm gonna start where it's easy, right over here, like just an experiment with strokes. Okay, I'm mean, just gonna stand just to just like this. Uh, anyway, so um, going up, I'm, I'm gonna show that it's a real ragged top. I can come down to. Okay, I'm leaving gaps. I'm gonna let some areas dry, so that way I do a second coat. Um, this paint is normally semi-transparent, so if I do a second coat, everything just gets darker. So I have all that texture, okay? The trees aren't, aren't the whole hill. There's probably about three trees heights on that one hill. Now I'm just gonna kind of rough it up a bit, let, let those edges dry, go a little darker. 
it definitely does get darker as it's closer to that sun. So I'm just gonna do a thin line at the bottom and commit to that thin line and go up. Now my sun is about right about here at the bottom of my sun. And it comes up and it hits that tree line. So that sun burns all through. That's amazing how light is so strong that it blocks you from seeing that, that whole circle around it. That's why you shouldn't stare at the sun. <laughs> okay, uh, moving on. Uh, anyway, so you got this moving across there. And then I'm gonna paint a little bit upside down. Okay. So behind these trees, we know it's a blob of another forest. I'm just gonna go up a bit and come down. I, I'm not gonna go too high, but I'm going to uh, come down a bit. It is a slow kind of bulky, it looks like the tree line ends and then it goes back to the distance. If you want to describe that, you certainly can. I'm not going to bother. I'm going to keep this simple. Okay. And I'm going to let this dry for a second. Right over there. I also have some darkness right at the front here. Some of you probably didn't put this in. So I'm going to try to keep, again, I'm going to pack my brush so it's a nice wedge. I'm going to go right across there. Nice wedge. I'm going to go up a bit and down. Move that brush whatever direction I have to move it to get that shape. And that's the beauty of a brush, is that you can make shapes. Okay, yeah, and go a little closer to that sun. So I'm going to bring some color on top of this uh, dark area right where the sun is anyways. And I gotta go darker anyways. So I'm hoping this will dry so we can go darker over it and keep the texture. Give it a second, I guess. I'm gonna put some more darkness over here. And trees like to grow up and down, so I can't. I have to remember to go up and down as well and have up and down strokes. Now, what I guess the difference, what painting really is, is we're showing texture, whether it's water, rock, tree, paper, cloth, how, how things hang, how Mother Nature, how gravity takes them and hangs them off things, and how things grow tall and how they fight for the sun, you know? Those are all the wonderful things of Mother Nature that we love so much, uh, that we love to illustrate as painters. You know, um, so here we go. So I did a second coat, really light, and I start to have texture. I'm gonna go even darker. It's pretty dark in there. So here I'm just going darker again. I'm gonna save some of my textures. So I'm gonna go darker and I'm not gonna go right up to the very top, keeping it very low. Now I'm gonna start to, I'm gonna start to add black to that scene. I'm gonna go really close along the bottom here and clean that up. Make sure my line's good and go. Start painting upwards. Again, paint on there really good. Going upwards. I want differences. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put some dark in there too. Up here, the trees look like they're pretty strong. Most of the trees go to points, so I'm putting the point down. If I don't know what I'm doing, I look at my reference. All my information is at my reference. I try not to use my imagination too much. I still want to try to keep it within my reference. There is a, a line there between the reference, you know, and it really, you know, depends on, on you whether, you know, there are certain things about this reference which are very, very safe. And that's the, the light areas and the dark areas, you know, that can be very, very exciting. Okay, so that's that piece of land. These trees I can put in right at the very, very end. Okay, great. So now we're gonna put this color aside and I'm gonna give it a little bit of a soak. The red and the black or the burnt umber and the red. I'm gonna give it a little bit of soak and I'm gonna put down the floor over here. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab, okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the um, uh, the grays. So I'll put, I'll put some white down on my palette. And I did mention Payne's gray. Um, or you can use Tiju Black. Um, I also mentioned Fellow Blue and Ultramarine Blue. So I would get your two blues, your Fellow Blue and your Ultramarine Blue, or your blue, uh, and a little bit of black or Payne's gray. I just forgot the Payne's gray. Give me a second. Okay, I got my paint screen. 
So I'm putting down a little bit of Payne's Gray. Uh, the Thello Blue, which is really interesting, is a very cold blue. The Ultramarine Blue, um, and I'm using uh, Golden, I'm using Golden and Triart um, as my tones. Uh, the Ultramarine Blue is a very warm blue. Some people almost consider it a purple. Um, so it's a good start to putting purples down. And if you look at our reference, there's actually a little bit of yellow behind some of that. So I let that sit, and there's my, my, my palette uh, with my white, my Payne's Gray, my Thello Blue Ultramarine. But I forgot to put a little bit of yellow down. So I'm gonna go back to my yellow. I hope if you, you don't have to, if you don't want to, but I wanna see what happens when I do. And I'm just gonna put, make sure my brush is clean. This is my yellow brush. I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow at the top. And I'm really gonna wet it up. And a lot of people put a little bit of yellow underneath the blue, because they find it, it kind of excites the blue a bit. I'm gonna put a little bit over here, and we'll see the difference. Okay, and that's about it. Because these clouds are, are moving, right? I got, you know, they got a stroke. They are they look like they're shifting this way. Okay, so that's all I want to do. Okay, so let that sit for a second. So um, I'm going to work on. Let's work on behind the tree first, uh, or down around here. Let's put the darker gray down first. So let's make our dark gray. So we're going to put the darker tone first. Um, I like doing the darker tone. Um, and we're gonna actually use some of that tone in here too, but a darker version of the darker gray. Um, so right now I'm using probably, you'd probably be using a number four or number two brush on a small canvas. This is 18 by 24. I'm using a number eight. And it's a filbert, it's a beautiful brush. Uh, it's a nice rounded top on it. Uh, I find it easier to blend. It has a nice soft touch to the front of the brush. Anyway, so I'm gonna add my Payne's gray and my my white, okay, and here I go again. I'm making my things gray and my, my, my white. Oop, that blue's leaking. Okay, so add a little bit of water to it. So it is it is pretty pretty light. Like I don't know if you can see that. It's I'm doing a test of it. It is pretty 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 pretty, pretty light. So I'm gonna start this off. I start to put it into here and across here a bit because you know, I could just sweep the frost. Put it up into here. And it depends how heavy I want it. But I do, I do, and then I'm going, I'm going kind of dry brush. You can see how it's going kind of dry brush on me. Okay. I am trying to keep it out of the out of the yellow just for now. Okay. And I'm just starting to put down a little bit of a pattern, working kind of light, you know, almost like a wash. Everything is dry behind it. Staying out of the yellow, yellow might be still a little wet. Okay. Oh, I'm getting close to the end of the paint. That's okay. I'll come down into here too. Come down into there. Just put it down as a wash. Okay. Then I'm going to add some more color, a little darker. So you're able to play with, with your tone, between going lighter and darker, depending where you are. When you get behind this area here, it is a lot darker up in this area. So I'm going to make it a little bit darker up into here. Just so we have, I'm going to still stay out of that yellow just, just for now. So I'm just going around it a bit. Okay. And you see I'm doing short little strokes and I'm really not, the brush isn't leaving the, the surface. It's almost like I'm scrubbing it in a bit. Okay. You can actually hear, I love that sound of the, the paint moving on, uh, on the surface. It's quite cool. Okay. Again, I'm maybe adding more paint, go to the edge of, the, of my pond, add my darker version. I'm mixing, I'm mixing it up with some of that white, maybe a little bit lighter. And I'm putting it everywhere, putting little pieces here and there. Uh, up here it's pretty dark, but I'm just going to stay out of the yellow just for now. I'm going to put some, it's kind of dark right in there. So I'm going to kind of show it right here, kind of matching it. You know, these little things don't really matter up to up to you, how close you are to the uh, original piece. Very, very rarely does anyone ever say, hey, look, look at the photograph. You know, this is what I, I copied from. Uh, and sometimes the stranger photographs really don't make great paintings um, because they they make great photographs because they're so unusual. Um, and the viewer can believe the photograph, but the viewer has a hard time 
believing on the, uh, the, the the painting. It seems like the artist is has his creativity involved. It could just be a crazy tree. Two branches. So I'm leaving space for the elbows going. Okay. And I'm going to get back up into here a little bit lighter. So the red I put down, the trees are still kind of ghosting through. I'm just taking my time. So putting some, yeah. putting my grays in. Okay. We're also going to put some blue in here too. Okay, get close to the pink. I wouldn't get too close to the orange yet. I just want to get close to the pink or to the yellow. What happens sometimes with gray is it goes green. Kind of went green over here on me. I, you know, it's kind of nice in a way up there. Um, I'm still waiting for this yellow to dry a bit. Uh, going a little bit lighter into here. It's nice to have differences. You have a dark area, you have a lighter area. And you can always soften it up. I can always put more pink down if I have time. So keep it kind of light. Okay. And we still have our blue colors to put down on the top, but I still want to put a little bit more gray. Now I'm getting into my yellows. I'm going to clean down a little bit more of a wash in some areas. So I have differences. Okay. And then I'm going to put another coat of white over that. Yeah, we'll kind of vanish a bit. The interesting thing about painting a, a tree in winter is that the branches are very um, structural. And uh, some trees are beautiful without, without uh, leaves on, on them. You can see the way the branches move and how they all relate to each other, trying to grab as much sunlight as possible. And it, it's, it's like a sculpture. You know, it's moving growth. Now, bear in mind, everything always looks better on camera. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so I'm going into here. Kind of going a little bit lighter. I just put some white with a little bit of a water, a little bit of wash on there. Just try to give it some differences. I got some spots into here, into there. Both spots into here. I'm going to come back with some blue soon. But the yellow and the white are mixing. I'm going to go lighter, leave some dark areas. Oh, we got some darker blue that's going to go down here, but we got some lighter stuff going on. Here. It's interesting how on the horizon it goes from a very pale, and over here too, it goes from a pale. So I'm going to put some pale down some of that pink at the edge. So we know the clouds will eventually come right into this area too. And this area will be gray as well. So I'm gonna be very careful in this area here. You see, I'm, I'm actually kind of staying away from it. And I'm really deciding whether how dark to go at the top. But I think I should put some blue in now. Start playing with some blue, making sure there's no, um, no I'm we're really working in washes and trying to create some textures. Okay. Now this is an important part of the painting. It takes over a big chunk of painting. The actual putting the snow down is gonna be a lot easier. So from what I can see, um, yeah, we're kind of ready for the blues. I came down to here. So in this region in the middle here, uh, we got a little bit of orange. I'm actually, um, before we go into the blue, let's go back into the gray and we'll try to do a mid-tone gray. Um, a number four gray, 40% black. If you ever worked on your computer, you know, I'm sure this will show you 40% black. Okay. But just a little bit of like a 40% black. Just so, um, and there's actually a chunk of a cloud that kind of comes across here and it kind of goes right across. It kind of stops and fills up. It comes across. And then another cloud that comes into here and comes down. Okay. Let's go deep into here. I'm going to put more, more blue. So I'm 
So as you look at different areas, and I really try to focus out everything but what I'm looking at to focus on. I don't look at anything else. I'm looking at this cloud over here, the cloud above here. And as you can see, I move, I move pretty fast. Um, but you, should, you can get the same thing with that. I am going over things over and over again, which you could probably do a lot quicker, but I just want to take my time with that just so you can see the evolution of uh, decision making, <laughs> uh, how dark you're going to go. <laughs> you know, um, if you really want that sun to come through and be very, very strong, the darker you go up here, the darker, the darker you have the sky, the stronger it is. Yeah. So now I'm going to put, there's like a little bit of a bank of clouds. I come down across here. I come down with this. I'm simplifying it. So, yeah. a little bit of a spasm in my hand. Okay. It is a little darker gray back here. So you see, I'm doing very transparent wash. And I'm also going up and down to just to blend it in the front of the brush. Okay. Okay. So now let's, I'm going to go into the blue now, because there is a lot of blue into here. And we're going to let that dry and we're going to let that settle. Um, that would be the nice thing because the water, or what we could do is, well, we still have our, our, our gray on our plate, but I suggest that we. Maybe do the snow in the foreground here. Do the snow way up, up up front. And uh yeah. So um okay. I'll do that right now. I'm gonna have to play with my other hand for a second. So I'm going to go to a bigger brush. Oops. Okay. Because we're going to put a little bit of gray across here. And we're going to start to gray. This piece of snow in the front here, it's it's mostly gray. It's all grays. It's completely all grays. So we're going to do that right away. So I'm just going to mix my color. And right now I'm going to paint with my left hand because I'm having a, I've been painting all day. That's what happens when you paint all day. You hit that yard of the hand before. So I'm going to do a little, little bit of a left hand. I'm going to cross there, down to here. Taking up some of that pink. Pink and pink's gray look great right on top of each other. Again, the orange would be a little strong, so I'm just trying to stay away from orange. You know, to here. You see, I, even go, I haven't even gone back into this machine. Because I always go back into it later. But it has, it's crawling up, it's crawling up the hill, crawling up the hill. I'm going to paint in the direction, paint in the direction that the surface changes in. Okay. And I'll go up a bit. And there is some highlights in here. I'll grab a little bit more, a little bit lighter. Oh, we got a little bit of blue in there. Does it does appear? A little bit ultramarine blue. Yeah, it comes up and goes across. Uh, I get a little bit more pinky. Yeah, that's all down from here. Yeah, it looks kind of messy, you know. But that's part of the charm. Uh, we are painting impressionistic in the world. Yeah. I'm useless with my left hand. I just need to break for a second. Okay, here we go. Okay. There is a little bit of a light reflection at the bottom here, so I'm just going to a little bit of a light reflection. Oh. Interesting how the water is darker. Uh, a little bit of purple in here too, so I'm just going to add a bit of highlights. Just a small rock comes down. Make sure we get the middle here. Two. Oh, good. I'm going to jump across. I got that same gray. 
Now, you know, the nice thing about a coat of paint, you wait 10 minutes and you can change your mind, uh, which is a beautiful thing. So there's a lot of cross lines going across on this side, with a lot of ice showing. And again, you know, there's a, another texture in there, but I'm gonna not put the whole thing in. And you see how it goes kind of purple? And you put the beans way over top, this has a wash, you know? I'm going right to the very bottom. And this actually comes in about there. You see all the colors underneath coming, coming through. And then uh, I got my little piece of my paint way over here. I got a shadow. I got a little bit of paint right up here, but I'm going to make note. I'm going to come back with a darker color. A little bit of paint is going right across this. So let's go a little darker. It's a little bit more opaque. Less, less water. More, more color. And hit, hit the color you want. Now the interesting thing about acrylic paint, and if we did this in oils, we could totally do this in oils. Um, take, take a little bit longer, but acrylic paint changes its tone as it starts to dry. So what you think is a little bit lighter, it could actually appear, or it could be darker in the long run. Um, so it's always good to do things in stages and uh, uh, let things dry a bit before. And it's actually a, a point after 12 hours that it actually cures. And, it's, and, and it actually looks like, a lot of times when you look at a paint you're working on with acrylic, one side will be matte and then you put the paint on, it's shiny and then it dries and then it's not quite in the matte part yet. It doesn't look like it's a part of it. It looks like it's sitting on top still. And then after 12 hours or 14 hours or a day and a half or two days, depending upon the humidity and the time of year, then it starts to um, look like it's completely all one piece. But it does take time um, for it to cure. I'm putting a little bit of gray over here. Nice washes, just so I can see what's going on. I'm a little confused over here, but I'm just going to put a little bit of light gray in this on the down. When it, these trees are on the top, they'll be, they'll be awesome. Okay. I also have some white highlights I'm going to put down on the snow. I also have to do that bush in there. Uh, I'm going to put some more color across some of this pink in there. I'm going to go up into here. Again, I'm just paints gray and white right, 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 right now. Uh, there's also an edge. It's the snow as well, which is pretty dark. And an edge here. And then it gets kind of ragged as it gets across here. It gets a little darker. My rags back and forth. And it gives us a nice uh, moving towards the viewer presence. Okay, now we're going to put some highlights in here too. This one kind of get the darkness down first. How dark is that? You know, I'm trying to leave some of the magenta coming through too. Right, but we have uh, we have highlights to put in here, which won't take that long. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to go a little bit lighter gray where the yellow is. Because mm -hmm. it's actually going to be peach eventually. And I'm just going to gray it down a bit. Just put a couple strokes of gray across it. And then I'm going to put my peach in there. And actually, next is a little bit longer, actually. <laughs> so working with the grays. And I'm noticing where the highlights are. I'm going making final decisions on a few things. Very, very quick little decisions. Okay. So when that dries, uh, we also have a huge shadow here too. So let's put that in with the paint spray. So I'm going pretty dark with the paint spray. Okay. And it's a shadow off this, this, this bush here, which we were gonna put back. And it comes down and there's a dark edge. And it comes across here. And we'll go we'll even darker than that. But that's just to get the basic color behind it down. And we'll really, that's a nice patch. 
so it is. And we'll throw some dark. Darkness is here showing where shadows are and how the snow is bumping up in certain areas. And there's kind of a rock set over here coming in. The roots really coming over the edge and an edge point here. So it actually gets darker. There's a dark line in here too. It comes across. That bangs into a dark edge over here. And there it kind of levels off so you can kind of give a level look to it. So we really did try to put our darks down. Um, because if, as time moves on, you'll never get dark enough. Uh, I'm going back to my paint's great. Okay. I'm going to start to describe some of the shadows. I'm going really, really dark. So this tree comes down. So that's dark in there. Goes up, comes back down. But not I can always lighten that up. There's a darker edge across here. There's something over here too. Got two of those up there. And then I'm going to show the edges. Okay, so this one goes up, comes down. So I'm showing all the edges of the snow on this side. And soon we're going to put, we're going to finish off the water. We we'll go back to the orange palette and it's texture. Again, I'm losing my edge. I'm also going to put some of the things gray into some of the woods too. Well, I'm at it because we have to go darker here too. I'm going to leave some of that warmer color coming through once in a while. So, right off in the corner, it's going to go pretty dark. If you're using black, that's great. I'm using a little bit of gray. Be careful where that sun is. I'm still going to leave some of that brown there. I'm going to come back up over here a bit. And then I'm over this part. And it is pretty dark back here. So it's funny, what the tree will be black in here, the more red going across the darker areas, and put the tree back, it shift colors a bit. And I'm just going to bring that down and create a dark edge. As long as I got space to put some teaching ads on it. Okay, so we're going to let that, that dry. A little bit of light gray going across. And uh, we'll see how it dries. Put some bumps, textures into here. Lighter gray. Lighter gray that's already been put down on here. Look at my reference. There's some texture. As we get further away, it gets a little bit out of focus. Awesome. Softening up a bit. So we're going to put some more magentas into there. Uh, I'm just going to add some white there and some white gray. Just getting kind of dirty in here. Well, I'm, I'm prepping it for the peach. We'll be peach now. And I'm going to go right into the white all by itself. So I have a brush just with white on it. And I'm going to put a couple of strokes into the top of the hill here, really close to us, just so we can have some uh, dramaticness going on. 
Okay, over. This is the very highlight. This for the, and then we can always tint those guys. We can always add some peach into that too. And then it goes in that post and it's going to be peach throughout there. So I'm just smoothing down some of the color. Okay, yeah. creating a little bit of a, of a highlight zone, especially in here. All right, so we're going to talk about peach. So uh, we discussed, actually, let's wait a second. Let's go back up to this guy for, for a second. We're still playing with the Payne's gray. And this guy here, so it's not so bad. Okay. Um, let's look at the sky again. Now that we got more Payne's gray in our plate, let's put a little bit more gray down. Now I can, you can see how it's drying. So we do things in stages a bit. And uh, yeah. so the Payne's gray, we'll put the blue over top. So it's important that, you know, like how dark are you going to go? Like I was looking at that dark for some regions, like especially around here in the corner. When we put the blue on top, it'll be awesome. But we can go a little darker now. Remember, the, the goal is to make sure you make it darker so that comes out. Now, um, there is a movement, it looks like. So I am trying to move the brush upwards as well. And if I find that's too dark, I can always put a wash over. Like this, is, this is my med, this is what I kind of see as a pattern. Some clouds do have patterns. Uh, clouds are awesome. They do crazy things sometimes. Yeah, I'm going to blend some blue into there too. I'm going to wet my brush down a bit, take some of my paint off, and I'm going to do some surface blending. I think I have enough paint down. That's another thing is, hey, you know, you got enough paint down, now it's time to blend the paint that you have. So you do some blending. I mean, just let it sit for 10 seconds. Just so you're not putting patches in it. So you're making differences. It's all a process. Uh -huh. Good. Okay, I'm going to be putting some blue in there. Uh, I'm also going to be lighting it. I see something I did a little. It's funny how easy this is. I'm just going to make it a little bit more of a patch. So I just put some lighter gray down on my brush, and instantly I have a more of a white. That's pretty quick. Um, I like what's happening here. You know, a little bit more peach in there, a little bit more pinkish. We'll be going back to that, but that's a good point to get into our blues now. So we've been we've had this blue sitting there for a while. So I think we should go into the cold blue and put some cold blue down. The cold blue is the bubble blue. Oh, that's not the bubble blue. Live on here. This is the always exciting going to happen here. Everything live. And that's our fellow. To me, the fellow blue right here is actually, uh, to me, colder than cerulean. Um, I like it better. Um, it, is, it is a very strong uh, horizontal blue. It usually is a blue that's on, on the horizon. But anyways, uh, here we go. I'm going to mix a little bit of paint gray with it, just so it's a little duller. Um, and I'm going to start to put it into here. No, everywhere, just a bit. I know it's a little bit into here too. And over here, it's a little changing, a little bit more. Okay. We're going to be playing with magenta soon as well. I'm going to put a little bit into here too. A little bit into here. Okay. So we're blending tones. So we're letting tones sit. You got to be brave. <laughs> you got to be brave to let your color sit like, like, like that. And then deal with it when it dries, and that's part of this class with being brave and letting letting the flows happen, and then realizing, you know, hey, what could I've done better next next time? And that's one of the ways I think we learn. I'm still playing with the things gray, putting it down in the wash. Just want to get some blues in there. The blue into the, the magenta is very nice. You know, and it actually gives a little bit of the yellow, yellow look into into some of that yellow on the scene. Now I'm just blending it, right? and it's been layered. And I'm softening up my edges, protecting my white space. But I'm still going to go into here, get a little bit of a blue tinge. And over here, I'm going to over here address this. I'm going to probably put a light blue in this just corner. It looks like a, um, actually, this is where we start to get into the ultramarine blue, the warm blue. And I think that's what's over here is a warm, kind of this warm blue. Now, if you don't match the color exactly to the painting, you know, it's your product and it's your pain. And as long as you enjoy it, and that's what this whole purpose is about. We're learning new techniques really quickly. 
Okay. Still play with the paintings. So I play with fellow blue and ultramarine blue a lot. If I, if those are my two favorite blues, just like magenta and cad red white. Those are my two reds that I play with as well. If I want to make them darker, I'll influence them by either raw umber, burnt umber, you know, all the dark browns or paints gray or black. And uh, that's how I can play with grays and blues. Um, with blue, you, you, you always do have to add a little bit of white to your color, the blue, or else it goes down really streaky, which can be effective at times as well. As long as you realize that, that when you mix two colors two together, it, it, it makes everything opaque because it, it doesn't really give you twice the mass. The two colors will kind of integrate with each other. And before it builds mass, you'll notice that it just makes it more opaque, um, which is what we're doing right now. We're doing a, a, a way of painting, which I think is about 400 years old. It's called thick over thin. We're starting thin. And then as we move along, we go thicker and thicker, uh, less and less water. So when I put this force down again, uh, it has even less water. And I'm trying to get a look that kind of, now I'm playing with the ultramarine blue and it's working out great. You know, it's giving me my, my light fluffy zones and I'm working my way up, you know, um, letting the paint dry. I'm not overworking it. Um, letting the paint sit and I'm just putting right beside it and softening up certain areas. And the ultramarine, the ultramarine really likes the, the magenta. They're good buddies. This is here. Now I can always go lighter or darker. I always do the wash, but it's a beautiful mixture of clouds. That's what's so spectacular about this type of painting. You know, wow, what a color! You know, it's hard to describe this type of winter scene to someone who hasn't experienced it. You know, someone who's living in the tropics and most of their lives. You know. Anyways, so we're moving on. Um, I guess that's one of the reasons why we live in Collingwood. And so we've experienced these wonderful landscapes. And I'm just adding a little bit lighter, softening up the edge of it, and going across. So if you want to be safe, you can always add a little bit of whitish blue. And I say whitish blue, it's a nice way of describing it, mostly white. Give it a depth and down look or not holding one stroke, letting it right on the front of the brush, just softening it. Okay. In the last 10 minutes, we'll put the trees back and we'll be <laughs> Into here, and add a little bit more ultramarine blue. Soften up a bit. more strokes into here, then we'll be moving on. We we'll let that dry. Could be my, I think we should come back with some more magenta. Uh, kind of work on this face a little better. Another coat of gray in there. Because it really is a gray, it looks like a big gray circle right over there. Yeah. Okay. Um, do a little bit of a white, white wash as well. Kind of kind of some not really it. Kind of reflects some of that light that's coming off the sun. A little bit lighter up top. That's what's so amazing about painting. You can change your mind and change your colors real fast. If you find that there's not enough color variation, because it's nice to have colors change, you see how quick it is to change your color. A little bit of a white wash over it. You still get all the color underneath, or a little bit of a blue wash over it. And just kind of flatten it out. Push it, push it. And you know, kind of now it integrates in the dark. It looks like it's moving. Uh, we still got to do with some of the stuff into here. So now, um, let's look like let, let, let that dry. Let that dry. Okay. So um, we still haven't touched our trees yet, and we haven't really touched um, our sun yet either. But we're gonna do that very very soon. We're gonna, I'm actually gonna make another orange. I'm gonna use the cad red light and yellow because cad red light is unbelievably is a strong strong color and i'm going to mix that <laughs> and give you the oranges the powerful like these oranges in here and actually some of the red too because they're kind of burnt the 
as well. But we're going to move to a smaller brush and we'll leave some gaps for some of that yellow to come through. So this is a basic rough sketch of it. We might even bring the line down a bit. And then we start to push some of that color into that and do that. I don't know what to call it. The, the ghost of the sun, the kaleidoscope of the, of the sun problem. And you can see how it's it's an orange in there. And that's what we're going to do with the cad red and the, and the cad red light and the orange. We're going to do that very, very soon. But I think um, we should probably figure out what's going to happen here and finalize the, the, the tree line before we do that. So I'm going to go back to my red black palette. And I'm going to give this guy a, a spray. All right, any questions so far? Am I moving too fast, too slow? How are people doing? <laughs> okay. Going well. Uh, anybody have any questions? Nothing's coming up in the chat, but it's... Uh... They've, all, they've all gone black. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm working <laughs> at least, at least At least what I could see. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, 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 that's their prerogative. That's, that's quite good. I have to say I'm thoroughly impressed with your skill. It's just <laughs> your painting looks stunning. Mine um, looks different, but it looks, uh, <laughs> it's fun. Well, I'll let it well, the idea is to push it, right? Is to push the YouTube. Well, I appreciate that. Thanks. Yeah. Lori, can I see yours? Are you working on yours now too? I guess so. Oh, oh, it's uh, I've got the blur. It's out of focus. Yeah, I've got my. I don't know if it'll come off. Um, if, if folks want to see me what, what what they're doing, that's 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 great. Oh, I see. You did the river kind of going off into the distance. I don't know if it's yeah, it's yeah, it I've looks almost like a blur on. Yeah, you see here, it cuts back here. Yeah. Yeah. Did Did you get that? Maybe. Oh. No, not oh. very well. <laughs> okay. Well, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, it just goes, it, what happens is it goes out of focus. It's focusing on you. It must be your, 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 your camera's smart. Yeah, I've got the, um, because I often have people walking past in the background, so I have my blur on and yeah. I have to in and turn it off and turn it back on. But yeah. Anyway. Okay. Well, maybe everybody else will be brave. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> um, thank you all for, for being here. I'm just going to grab some black because you think I would remember black. Now, the nice thing about acrylic is that you can always add more color. Uh, we're working from washes and now we're going to go a little bit more opaque. I'm going to save some of that brown in there, but I'm actually just going to try to create uh, a stronger, darkerness in there, really at the bottom here. And I'm, I am going to bear in mind that I do have to put this trees back over top. So be careful over here. Don't overdo it too too much. Uh, but this needs a really dark. That would make this sun so strong. I might even raise that up a bit. Um, but I'm just going to put some black in there. Now, now this 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 is a good a good painting to to really push your, your color and to learn more about tones. Um, and I'm just going to put some dark light in there, especially right down the corner here. Again, I'm not putting down as a patch. I'm leaving spaces. So I am going to make it really dark right underneath the sun. So that way, when I do those lines over top, all will be gorgeous. And I'm going to make this dark too. Take my time. Make these into tops of trees. It's rugged, it's ragged. There's no pattern. Some are big, some are small. If you want to see a pattern, don't do a ding, 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 ding pattern unless they're grown by man, which happens. You know, you see that in Barry, you drive it to Barry, where the trees have been grown by man, you know, and everything in a row. It's, it's kind of cool, actually, especially if you drive by it kind of fast. You know, I'm glad, I'm glad the trees are there, but, uh, you know, we're doing a, uh, a free-grown forest, we think. 
Someone once told me that most of Ontario has been clear cropped at least once. Um, so, and I'm just keeping that ragged, just like it is there. Here in the in the image, it's really dramatic. Uh, I'm not going to. I don't want to overpower. I think you got a big bump here, going right behind here. It's bigger. And I'm just going to go right up. Right, some fuzziness. So I'm painting up and down. I'm letting the trees. I'm not putting so much. No. Going over this part here. I want the darkness at the bottom here. So as long as you are cleaning your brushes in between, you can even grab a fresh brush because you really want strong, clean, yellow, orange, red, magenta. Um, you want your colors to be very, very clean. And, you know, everything else can be kind of muddy and dirty. The grays can be kind of muddy and gray. Um, you don't have to use paints gray. You can use black and white. You can even use raw umber in, in some of this. It would look good too. Um, but the colors that you put down using the sun and hitting the uh, the oranges in here, which we're going to put down very, very soon. You know, they have to be um, uh, strong, clean. Um, you know, they can't be dirty. Um, so in some cases, if you find that your yellow went a little dirty, uh, you can always just wait 10 seconds until it dries and put a second coat down. And really, I, again, I'm using a big bucket, okay? So that way I have a lot of water that I can clean my, my brush with. Or I also have a lot of brushes that I can use. So I don't run into any of those problems. Um, and uh, that's actually one of, the, one of, the, of the, the biggest things is keeping your colors clean. Um, if you want them dirty, making them dirty. If you, you know, so it's, it's a time thing right? for, 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 for you. Is preparing, you know, um, slowing down a bit. Don't, don't get too excited, you know. Have a look, watch it dry a bit. There is something to say to watch painting dry. Uh, what am I doing today? I'm watching my painting dry. I'm watching the paint dry. Um, that's exactly what we're doing. Because it's interesting, especially with acrylic, it does change its shape. It does change um, its tone. It gets really a lot darker, actually. So here we go. Um, so we are working, we're going to start to work with our peaches now. I, I think I'm mentioning peaches, peaches, peaches. We got our darkness in. And I like the dark. So now we're going to go back to our magenta. And I'm taking my magenta plate. And just because I want to save the world one plate at a time, I'm going to put down my cad red light, a warm red. Any cad red is warm. Or you're going to put down your, your red, more of it, uh, whatever red you want. You can always add a little bit of yellow. If you don't have cad red, add a little bit of yellow to the red so it goes kind of peachy. Um, uh, a warm red will make peach, a cold red will make pink. And that's how you can kind of tell the difference between a cold red and a warm red, uh, if you can't see it. After a while, you will start to see it. Um, it makes it easier to match colors with our tubes that, and the brands, and you notice they're all the same names, unless you're designer colors. It just makes it easier to match real life photographs or reference. Once we know the color, oh, that shadow there is warm or cold. And we'll be getting into grays being warm or cold. So we have a habit of looking at colors being warm and cold, which for some people is quite a new, a new thing. Anyway, so I have my cad red light. Oh my God, this cad red light is so strong. It's one of the strongest colors ever made. Um, it will um, eat everything. So you don't need a lot of it. And I put a lot down. I'm just going to take a little bit and add my white. And I might actually have to go back and make more white or, or get more more white. It's one color that I can't make. But you see my peach? Okay, my peach versus my pink. And as I can tell, there's right under the sun here, this is all peach in here. And it's a beautiful shade of peach. And it turns a little bit on the yellow side, so we'll be working with that in a second. And we're gonna add some white to it, lighten it up a bit, go across. And it gets a little lighter, so it gets a little lighter. I'm gonna add some white to that peach. It's a little lighter as it gets over to here. Add some white to that peach. Same thing kind of happens over here too. Add some white to the peach. Just so it gets white. You notice the lighter peach will actually merge with the gray better. All right, let's see, let's do a couple of strokes. Again, maybe your peach is too dark, make it a little bit lighter. Sometimes it dries darker. We're going to add some yellow to that once we get some of that gray covered. 
There's one adult now. This one's not all electric. Right across. And that's our peach. There is a lot of yellow, but we're going to let that sit. And we'll come, we'll come back in a second coat. There might even be a little bit of peach and just some of these guys down here, too, when I reflect this one. A little bit of peach into the yellow, too. Okay. No, we're kind of going to blur them around and they're kind of looking down. It really depends on you. This is a texture. All right. And there is also a little bit of a kind of a wind wave, I guess, hitting the snow as it comes across. All right. Got a little bit of peach, but I'm still leaving some of that gray. See, I'm doing that. And then I'm softening up a bit. I, you know, I haven't gone back into my, into my, into my color. I'm still playing with the color of my brush. And there's a little color, it's kind of nice. If I want to come down, it's kind of a little bit higher. All the color, the end is kind of, doesn't have any. So if I want to bring the color down, I can place the color, I then drag it. It's called dragging, you're doing surface blends. And we end up doing it more and more. The more you do it, the better you can get at it. And it kind of looks like magic originally. I remember when my, I went to uh, Florence for education as well. And I remember my teacher was, was doing some of this. Uh, it's like magic, it's coming out of, but it's just coming out of the, 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 the middle of the brush as you go across this practice. Okay, getting some peach in there. Kind of mixing with the gray, the peach is kind of nice with some of the gray. Gonna deal with that water suit. So now I'm gonna take my yellow plate. Okay. And it's dripping wet, so I'm taking my rag to it just to get rid of some of that water. And uh, I'm going to put down, I'm going to take my peach that I just made. Take my peach and take a whole bunch of my light peach. I'm going to take it and put it on my yellow plate, I'll put it close to my yellow, and then I'm going to start to affect it with the yellow. And you get some beautiful tones. Oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. Peach into yellow is beautiful. Um, and I start to play with some of this up here. I'm pretty dark. I can start to describe the darker clouds, which the light almost can't get through, but reflecting off. And that's what we're painting right into here, across there, with the peach. And leaving some of the yellow as well. And then there's some peach into here too. You can always put some of the peach. Kind of climbs up into this neck of the woods as well, and a little bit of peach in here. It's a little bit in the yellow sand. I don't want to go green. So I'm going to, I'm going to put some pink over that actually too. I'm going to, we're going to put some more pink into here as well. That's, that's pretty good. I can put the sun's rays over top of, of that. Or I can even take my, my peach with a smaller brush. Um, okay. Make sure it's not too, I took a smaller brush. And we're going to start to work on the sun rays with, with the yellow. So the ray, it's really yellow line, kind of mimicking the top of the clouds. I didn't know how this burst of light coming through. Now I'm just going up and down over top of some of that color below it. Now I can always fix up the edge here. I'm moving. And I'm going to take my white white, so I'm right into white. And I'm going to get a little bit of a white hue to make my white circle. It's turning a little bit on the yellow side, which is kind of nice. Okay. Put my white circle in. Then I go back to the yellow at the bottom. Put that more yellow at the bottom there. And then I'm going to go into my cad red, my peach, my cad red, and my white, and make some more peach. I just ran out. You're always mixing tones at this point of the game. You spend a lot of time on your on your palette. Okay, I'm making peach, and I want to add some yellow, make some more of that dramatic peachy yellow tone. Yeah, yellow. I'm going to pull these guys across that black. Now I can, once I get the shape in, 
I can change the time. I just want to get the basic shape. I got back up. Yeah, as long as it's nice and clean, light travels pretty straight line. I can always change that time. A little bit more pinkish. Before you know it, you have magic. It's magic. Close up the gap a bit between these. Okay. Then I'm going to go to my magenta. I'm going to make some pink. Got some pink. Got some pink in here too. And I'm going to go back into my cad red. I'm going to play with the cad red. A little bit of white. Okay. Great. Now the hard part part is getting it to end. <laughs> so I think after it's, it's still a little wet, I'm just going to buzz it down a bit at the end, make it soft with my rag. I can always put more black into there as long as it fades away. And I'm going to put some black into there too. But don't worry, that's quite okay. As long as it's faded, it kind of fades away. But we're going to put some black into there too. And these actually jump down a bit. They actually come across the yellow here a bit too. Because they're coming right at us. But we're, I'm going to put some black into here and clean these up a bit. You'll, you'll see what I'm doing. Well, yeah. You know, the nice thing about acrylic is we can go from light to dark, from dark to, to, to light. So, um, it's, it's not a hard, you know, it's, uh, as long as you can uh, visualize it, I guess it can, it can be done. Uh, anyway, so I'm just going to go bang, 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 add some yellow to that. Oh, it starts to explode a bit. I don't get more yellow into here. I'll put some yellow into here. Using a smaller brush. Make it a little more dramatic. Uh, I don't let that dry. That's a good start. Okay. Oh, let's put some yellow into the snow. So it comes right down. So this part of the snow is kind of yellowish. So I'm just going to kind of follow these. I'm just going lightly over top. Yeah. And I'm also going to put some more yellow inside some of these. Put more white yellow. It's very, it's very uh, dramatic. Yep. Kind of has a go to it. Almost looks like a hand. That's okay. I'm going to clean up over here. I'm going to clean up over there. I'm going to put some yellow into here too. Oh, hello. It's a little splash here and there. You know, it does go a little kind of darker in there. That's okay. Well, it's because we we've got some yellow rebounding off stuff too. Yeah, right down to here. There is a little bit of an arc down there. Yeah, it just reflects some color. So now let's work on the orange in the water. And we're, we're so close to being done. Actually, I think we'll be done on time. Yeah. Okay. I'm uh, almost getting ready to put the trees back. It's, uh, it's, it's getting there. Um, you know? Uh, yeah. So. Okay, so now I'm looking at this area here. I know, I know I'm sorry for going so fast, but I, I have to keep things going. So um, uh, this is, a, is a, a very tricky area where the sun's coming out. Um, I could have made the negative space into points in here. For example, I'm blocking into a, an end here and my next coat of red, I'm gonna make that into a point and that into a point. So the dark spots are points. I'm going to come back and put more dark in here too. I'm going to pre-play with it back and forth. I'm going to let this dry a bit. I like what's happening up here with the yellows, with that yellow, that warm yellow into the blue up, up in here. It's rather nice. I could have carried a bit more into here, but I wanted to be safe. That's not bad. Uh, we could still go darker if we wanted to, the sky. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a good start, you know. Uh, we'll see how the time goes when we put this tree in. But it's a safe start, you know. It's still get the same effect. 
between dark and light. Uh, it's nice as well, as the sky is not flat. It has its dark areas and it has its lighter areas. Um, yeah, uh, the grays coming through with the pink, the contrast between the grays and the pinks are rather nice. Um, some nice color variations down into here. So now we're gonna talk about the water here. Now, I didn't quite get the snow right, and we're gonna clean this up a bit now. Um, because my sun is over here, and in the shot, it is over the water, which I should have realized, <laughs> hey, you know? But that's what happens when you shrink the canvas down and you change things around. You never really know where things are, are going to go, right? So you, you do the best that you, that you can to, to, to kind of to, to, to make it work. So um, anyways, so moving right, right along, um, uh, I'm gonna pretend that this darker area here is still, is still there. It's still being affected by it. So um, I need to put this darker tone down first and blend the orange into it. So to me, it's a very moldy brownie tone. So it's almost like a warm mud with a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of peach in there. So I'm gonna start from a peach. So I made a decision not to start from this mud here looks peachy, it doesn't look pinky. So uh, what's peachy is the warm red, the cad red light, and I'm putting it down. Then I'm going to grab some black to it. I'm going to darken it. I'm going to add some white to it. We're going to make it into a mud. Make it into a muddy, 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 muddy tone. Kind of peachy. Okay. I can always do a little check on there. You know, it's it's a little bit more. You know, it's probably somewhere around there. You can go darker. Not like so. I'm, I'm pretty close there. So I just added some, some darkness and some red and some peach, and I made a nice mud, okay? So I'm gonna put the mud down now. The mud goes all across here and into here. It's kind of a cool color. It, it's, uh, we might have to, you know, painting this without reference, I would have never known to put the mud there, that muddy tone there. But when you look at it, yeah, it's kind of muddy. So I'm putting that muddy tone down. And as we creep across up higher, I'm going, I'm making that mud and making it a little bit lighter. Just so I have some differences. Right. Comes right across, bites into here a bit. Mm -hmm. And then it gets really, really dark because it starts to travel up. So I'm just adding some more of the darkness to it, being a little darker. Right. And there's that little edge to it, right? And that little bit edge kind of goes across and kind of follow. That's the edge of, edge of the ice. If it's too dark, I can always add some light over it. Right? And then it comes over even more. So now I'm going to go into a wash. I got some yellow in there that I want to save. So I'm going to bang it into some of these dark tones into here. It's going to be a bunch of different tones on top of each other, anyways. And so I'm now spreading it over. A little bit of reflection points down a bit. Again, with a dark. I want the bottom of the canvas to be very dark. And we can pull across. The blue really shows up when you start to pull that color across a bit. And if you don't like it, you can always put a color over top of it and go across. Okay, we've got the blue purples happening there, and we're going to be integrating to that soon. Uh, got some color in here, but not much. This is mostly purples. But a lot of purple. A lot of purple in there, which we'll be doing, which is magenta and blues. Okay, so we got down, then we're gonna go darker again. This is where I get into the black, and I can kind of see some black edges in there too. We really, really want things a lot darker than lighter, just so we can get the strength going on here. Now, if you're in the black, you can also start to fade away some of these ends, so you just kind of fade away, and always put them back a bit, you know. Uh, you can always use your finger to do some soft shading. It's okay to use your finger, just don't use your tongue. Uh, in the olden days, uh, the artists would put their tongue on the brush to put it to a point. Oh my God, did they die young? Um, okay, and here we go. Some people paint with gloves on. If this was oil, I sometimes paint with gloves on oil. Uh, I've been painting for so many years. 
Just want to add some texture okay. up and down a bit. And we'll some texture over here. It's very dark, go black. And I might even fade it down even more. This guy should be new. We can always move things around here. It should be there. Yeah. And the nice thing about working on the black, I can always put some of these guys back. I can always do another coat on top, and I will. I'm kind of not really shifting on. Like, I can even just go black over top of it, down and down again like, if I wanted to, and try a second time at it. It's really amazing how fast you can cover black with a color and tint it. You could theoretically do a whole gray and white painting, and I just do transparent tones over all that gray and white. And I've done that before, and I have paintings around, which that's what I've done. I've done a whole gray, white version of it and just added color, um, almost like they do in the, in the printing process. And actually, that's where I thought of the idea. Um, later did I know that it's actually a technique where you can paint gray. It's more of an oil technique. Uh, Michelangelo uh, did a lot of his sketches with charcoal. And then so you do the shading in charcoal, and then you put a, a oil wash over everything. And then you, so it set everything almost like a fixative. And then he would add his oil paint on top. He, he, in those days, they all made their own oil. oil. So um, it wasn't like our today's paint. It was a lot more transparent um, in most cases. Uh, so um, they were able to, um, so they had all that black on the air from the charcoal sitting with a layer of dried oil over top. So it was, it was quite easy to, put, to apply the paint and to have all the black skeleton up here. I'm being kind of crazy in here. I probably don't have to do all this. But I kind of want to show you if you push yourself too far, not to worry. Okay. I just want to put some texture in there. So I'm going to come back with some gray and soften all that up. I just kind of want to get some texture going. That's one here. Now, the bush. Let's put the bush in. I'm using a small brush. You probably could even use a round. If you have a small round, I'm going to go up. I'm, just, I'm going to try it to, it's actually not really a bush as much as a bunch of light plants or something called all in a, in a bunch. And they're growing in different directions. I'm trying to go to a point. So when I'm lifting up, I'm going heavy and I'm letting it fly. I'm trying to get the ends really soft and gentle. Okay, then I got my hole here. Put my hole in. Put my rock over here. This whole area back here is kind of very really dark. So let's put that in really quickly. So with my small brush, looking back at my details, put some of my dark regions in. Remembering that it's hitting snow, so some areas are rounded. Right? But there are dark regions. It starts to give it the shadow. So when you put the darker area in, the area you're working that you thought was darker now looks lighter. <laughs> because uh, you can actually see, ooh, that's the dark area. Uh, I'm actually going to come right across. That's close enough. Then I have a reflection here. Uh, where's my white? I'm gonna make some grays just with the black. So these are neutral grays. The haze gray is very blue. The neutral grays they certainly do stand out against that that Payne's gray. They almost look warm against the Payne's gray, but they work well together. All the grays can work well together. Um, it takes some time to see the grays, but most color that's in shadow is either gray with a little bit of tone in it. A lot of paintings are gray and just have a little bit of tone in them. 
Um, that was kind of weird. Yeah. See, I'm taking my time. I'm not rushing. I'm looking at color differences and pushing that paint around. Believe me, I'm no genius. Okay, great. So I got kind of that going on. So now I'm going to make sure that I get some more magenta and a few more tones into this part of the hill. It's highly reflective. I'm going to put a little paint in there. The transition of tone is very nice as well, going from a dark area to a light area. Even when the light area is only a little crust going across the top, but it really does describe the snow and the shape of it, which we do take for granted being Canadians. Actually, I kind of miss the snow. I know, I know, sorry. But uh, winter without snow, wow. You know, living in Canada without snow. I hope my grandchildren don't have to. It's not. But we're doing whatever we can. I'll make that not reality. Uh, we're getting back into the topic. <laughs> it's amazing sometimes you, you can paint and start daydreaming. And all, and all at once you look back and go, when did I paint that? I, mean, I thought I was daydreaming. So I'm kind of prepping for where that strong yellow is going to go. And I still need to put some gold in there. So uh, I'm going to go back to my cad red and my yellow. I need a little bit more yellow. Put that down there. And now we're going to put, and I got a little bit of grayness, warm gray on my brush. And I'm just going to go into... I'm going to go into a middle yellow. So it's warmer, it's closer to the orange. And I'm going to go into the cad red light. And I'll make sure I don't put too much cad red light on there. Because orange is like one of the weakest colors. So I barely took all the color right off that brush before I put it in yellow. Because I just lose it. And you see how I got it? I'm just going to add a bit to it. It makes it interesting. Make it deep orange. Just to go into here. There we go. Okay, we got some yellow going across. Got some yellow. Yeah. I'll try not to overpaint. I'm actually trying to underpaint. Try to put a little bit down as I can. Okay. Comes down to some brown, put it across really lightly so I see soft edges, soft edging it into some of the brown. And we'll come back and put our tone in. I think it's kind of dirty down here. I'm just going to put it across here. Leaving spaces for that yellow. The yellow zigzag, I'm try to put that in as well. And then I'm going to come down, go back to my, my reddish side. Put more on the red side now. Right. Again, a bit more on the red side over here. So I'm just shifting over to a little bit more of the red. I'm putting my red strokes in. I'm biting into some of that brown, kind of blending it, making it look like it's being affected by that. By the sun because of the surface, where this surface is a little bit more purple, so it's not affected by it in the same way. This surface has been dried and it's been melted, and it's been dried and melted. Maybe it's sandbar. But it's different. Not, we like differences. And I'm just getting it away over here. It just goes to the grays. Okay. So now I'm gonna let that just dry for just for a second and have a good look at it and see if I'm yeah, I'm in the ballpark. That's okay. Behind this, the shadow, I punched it really close. I did it right here. So that's that's okay. So let's go back to our yellow. And I'm just using the straight mid mid yellow. And I'm just going to get even closer to the center. I'm going to cover all that white. Then I'm going to put white over top of this yellow. I just want it to have a soft variation. So that way it's easier to put more yellow on top. And then have a little bit of a start and stop. It's interesting. You know, as long as you get close to what's happening. 
I think it's really strong right at the front here. Oh my gosh. A little bit more yellow down here. Yeah, this is highly reflective. Right? Which is really nice, actually. And then it cuts across here. And it's kind of rough shape painting because it's either there or it's not. And down the middle here, we're going to go lighter. Cut off a little bit. Okay. Then we could always put a little bit more yellow. We can always increase the amount of yellow into here just to pump it up a bit. Okay. Again, we're going to work on the light rays. We go back to the yellow side of it all. I'm actually going to make them a little. I'm going to make them. This guy's perfect. So I'm gonna lower this down a bit more. I'm gonna actually raise it. I'm gonna raise it. I'm gonna make them a little bit fatter. And more. I'm gonna make them a little bit fatter. Blend more into, into that darkness, as they say. Okay. This is a little bit fatter. So I'm gonna try to imagine I'm coming from the center. And there's a little bit of a highlight going across here too. Oh, there's not really enough right here. And then we'll fix it up later. So it's Maybe over exaggerate a bit. And I'm going to put the black back once I get this color going. So I'm just blending it. I can always put the black back. It's actually probably easier to do that, to reconstruct it. But it's nice to have these variation of tones. You know what I'm saying? It's really nice to have these variation of tones. Go up. And it is, yeah. And then we're going to go back to our, our yellow. I might have a little bit more yellow. I'll drag it through. Yeah. Yeah. The sun is so strong that it blocks everything. Yeah. See how it looks like it's coming right now? So I did a little different than, than the photograph. The photograph could capture <laughs> actually in moment in time. I could always come back and put some, but that's rather nice. Like, you could, you could get away with, with that if you wanted to, as, as part of, of, of your image, having it look like that. Like, that's quite a, okay, you know? Um, so let's put the trees back so we don't run out of time. I'm finished with my sky here. Uh, we could go more gray into the sky, but I like that kind of gray. Uh, it's not too dramatic. Um, I don't want to overpower the trees. So I, I like that. I like how it's a little softer than our, our reference. Um, we still got to play with some purples and magentas in here, which is really what we should get into again soon. Um, <coughs> uh, but right now, I think uh, if you're happy with your sky, you know it. Uh, <laughs> let's put these trees in um, just so we can see what we're dealing with. So we have an overall picture. We can always play with, with things later. And I, I'm a, I don't want to wear anybody out too, too, too much. So um, as you see, I can still see everything I did. It's all right there. Um, it hasn't moved any, any, anywhere. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's great, it's ghosting. It, imagine putting these in now. <laughs> Oops, you'd have to go back to the sky. There's some elegance here in the sky that we're just gonna leave and move, 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 move on with. That if we had to put the trees in now, it'd be quite nervous, nerve wracking in any ways. So it's kind of nice that we're kind of leaving that. Uh, we put those in. So we have our guys. We have the basic three trees. I brought down the three trees that I thought were important. Um, they're very, very dark. They're so dark that we could actually uh, put them down black almost or raw umber um, if you, uh, with a little bit of white or a little bit of red in there. So let's go to our red black plate, our red black. 
Um, I'm just using a cad red there. Um, kind of want to make them warm dark instead of cold red dark. You know, it's kind of funny. Um, after a while, you start to dream in color. <laughs> I think we all dream in color. I know some people. You know, I don't dream. I I always. I think it's smelling. I don't think I smell things like if I had a dream about flowers. I don't think I'd be able to smell. I definitely. I think I dream in color. Interesting. Tonight, when you fall asleep, tell me tomorrow if you dream in color or not. And then whether you can smell the flowers. So here we go. We're messing in with some black and some red. I'm getting some pretty deep tones. Okay. Love black into red. One of the easiest ways to, to make a, um, to, to dull red down. Um, it's beautiful. I'm going to start my stroke in the middle of the tree. And I know that one side of the tree is very dark and the other side of the tree is a lot lighter. So I'm going to start somewhere simple where I can see it. So I'm going to start from the front, from the, from the top. I'm just a little bit shy of the edge. I'm coming down. And this is a close up tree, so I can go a little bit wider. The trunk's a little rough. All right, so I'll make a little, a little bit rough. Comes through here and it gets really wide. And we're going to make this part a little lighter as it comes down through here. Looking on the other side now, again back to the middle, coming down, bringing it right down into its brown anchor. Okay, then I'm going to play with this part here. Again, you see how I loaded my brush and the paint is imperfect. Uh, it just flows. All right. It took me a while to look to work that paint so it has enough ox oxygen in it. So it just flows and moves. And then we have the next guy here. We committed to give him a wider base. He's kind of arcing up. Don't worry, we can always put the highlights in on this guy too. And he's got a branch. Don't worry about the branches, just do the main trees. Okay, branches can always come on later. Make sure you like that tree and how it flows. Okay, kind of going up and down again, in and out. Let's create some texture. Trees, you know, they lose stuff along the way. It's arcing, so I'm going to soften the arc. Again, I'm trying to keep it thin at the top and thick at the bottom. This brush is allowing me the paint to, to spread really, really well. It's a habit where if I don't get paint off the edge of the brush, I don't push harder. I come back and reload the brush and put all the paint back to the front of the brush again. And then I can continue my stroke, right? Now these, these branches are coming down and kind of arcing as well. And there's so many small little branches that we're just gonna put the essence of the branches. Okay, and trying to be very careful where my next branch goes. Let's do this, this tree here. So the easy stuff first, that she's gonna come right down through there. Okay, looks good, a little wider. Okay, we got a lot of branches and stuff into here. We can put it in later. There you go, branches and stuff. Put it down the bottom there. Maybe we can put a little bit of purple snow in there too. They lay, 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 lay there on. Turn it through here. So branches are fun. Um, even throw maybe throw another tree in there, have it kind of vanish behind something. You don't have to put every tree in. Also, you can also come back tomorrow and finish up. Maybe you want to put more trees in, you certainly can. It's nice. Leaving things sit a little bit after. Right. Try not to try to get some even spaces. The limbs will definitely help as we go across things. Right. Try to keep your thing a little bit thinner. It's a little bit chaotic over here in the corner at this end. So I'm just going to soften and kind of figure it out. Again, I'm doing all my up and down strokes first. Uh, but there is some movement of the trees. 
and how they're moving. I keep everything thin. I can always make them thicker. Well, I want this thin stuff at first. And I can always make them more opaque too. I just want to kind of figure out where they're flying, where they're going. And there's so many of them. I can even have branches just sitting in the middle of nowhere, going nowhere, just to block the area, just to make it look busy. Yeah. Well, you don't have to have it going to any desk, 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 and mission. I just put a whole bunch of branches and then they're there. No one cares. Honestly, no one really cares. Because <laughs> most people don't look at every single branch, they look at the essence of all the branches. So a lot of times we get really, really hard on ourselves. Now, oh, we didn't go all that deep, that deep detail that no one sees anyways. You know, um, most people simplify. And I was thinking about this too. Um, when you view something, you you blink and your eyes are moving all over it. You're taking pieces, all, all corners of it, and then your brain's putting that picture together. And sometimes when you think of, of like the cottage or the old family house, and you see photographs of it, your, your pictures your brain put together were far different than the actual reference. So it's hard to argue with reference, I guess is what I'm trying to say, um, and viewpoints. Um, but anyways, that's my rant. Anyway, so as we're going across, you see how that sun's looking stronger now? So if I get a little bit of black in there too, underneath it, a little, little blacker in here. Maybe a little bit of a blacker edge. Oops. A little more dark. Just get right in there. No. Oh. Look at that edge. Right on the front of the brush. But now it's starting to, to, to glow even more. So the darker we put down, oh my gosh, uh, the uh, the stronger the light source is, you know? Um, and you see how this is starting to, 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 to glow now. It's almost like there's a battery on it because of all that light around it. You know, have it, it's all, it's moving and, and you yeah. know. Okay, so uh, that dark is good. Uh, the trees are a good start. Yes, I have a tree stopping right there, bang. It's, it's not as tall as anything else. Lots of branches in here. If you want to move to a smaller brush, please do so. If you have a brand new brush and it has a great edge on it, and that edge is brand new, my gosh, you should be able to get some pretty fine lines out of that brush. And the nice thing about using a bigger brush is that it, um, what it actually does is it gives you more gas in the gas tank, so you can travel farther. But you have to be very sensitive to the edge. And I'm gonna put, I'm going a little bit lighter with some of the smaller branches, just so they're not so opaque. And I'm just gonna to start to put a few branches going up. And I don't even care where they're coming from. They're just kind of attached to each other. Yeah. It's a mess of branches. But there's no pattern, but don't start doing patterns. That's your brain over overworking. Little, little, little slight little sketches too, because they're those small lines, because they're far away. And all at once, as I move over to here, you start to see some sweeping lines. And I start to put some sweeping lines in. But it's safer to work smaller first, and then a little lighter, and you can always go a little stronger as you move along, a little darker. There's more branches over here. Trees do crazy things. Oh my gosh. Uh, we, when we do plain air, um, you see some trees are going around trees. I mean, they're going around fences. Oh, ever see the tree that grew into a fence? <laughs> Pick up the whole fence. Uh, trees are amazing survivors. But some of these branches are also arcing, and some of them are just traveling. They don't have to have a destination. Always, I guess they're just be hovering around, right? Some of them will go darker, some of them will make them a little lighter, but you know, they're off in the distance too, you know. They're very thin. And some of them are really covering most of the sky too, you know, they get a little thicker. You know, but the essence of the tree is, is really all they think. You know, if you had more time, you could spend a lot, you could spend a days just putting the branches, you know? But that's, uh, you know, you keep them thin right on the front. 
Não é no final do Brasha. Sim? So if you were to use a smaller brush, some of you would know what a rigger is or a script brush. And I'll, I'll get one. Give me a second. Because you'd also try using that one. Sorry, folks. Um, so, that brush there, so I recognize it. So, a script brush um, has a very long, very, very long hair. Very, very long. Um, when you wet it, it goes into a point. If you spin it, beautiful point. And a lot of people who are doing limbs, the limbs are moving around, they use this kind of brush too. So, I wasn't on the list of things to get because I didn't want you to have to go out. You can get and buy stuff, even though I have a store, but the whole idea of this was to kind of, you know, use stuff around at the library where you're help, help out, just to make it easier right, right now. Um, but um, you can also try using this brush too. It's tricky, uh, it has its tricky moments, but it can give you a beautiful, fine, fine edge, okay? Um, some of you might have them. It's used a lot in watercolor and oil painting uh, for, brushes. Uh, there's riggers. Now in the olden days, the rigger actually had a flat end on it. This is more of a script brush. I think we call this a script brush. A liner. But it could also be a script brush. Um, they have the long hair. Uh, they they hold their paint. The more, the more the hair, the more paint you hold. Um, I'm going to be putting some, some highlights on the edge of these trees next, showing the snow. And some of them look like they'd be almost birch. Putting some texture into over here. And that's what I'm going to do right now. And for me, I'm going to start off with a gray. So I got some more white. So we're working with the grays now. And I see if this brush works. If not, I'm going to go back to my other brush, which is in great shape. I think I'll go back to my other brush because I can move faster with it. Uh, I find it's uh, time consuming playing with the, the, the script brush for the liner. So here I am, and I'm just mixing up some, some color. I'm going to make a gray, lighter gray, then the gray on the edge. These trees are round, they're not flat, but they have some reflection of light. And then once I get to the edge a little lighter, I always come back and, especially where the sun is, especially through that little area there, I can always, this is, well, this is not a white, it's gray, just so it's not so strong. She's almost invisible. Like I'm right along the edge here. More comes down from here. Yep, it gets a little dark in here. Uh -huh. we'll come across into this here. Yeah. Now, when this gray dries, it won't be as strong. It should be a little lighter, darker. We know about coat paint and how it dries darker. So I'm hoping it dries darker. Right? And I get, you know, you could over, you could put way more, way more um, branches in here. I'm just gonna soften some of this just so it doesn't look so hard. So we can start here, comes down, good. I'm gonna add a little bit of red to the edge of the wood too, just so it's not so stark, a little color in between. So I'm making a kind of a muddy brown tone. And you could always use a little bit of transparent red in there, or um, if you have a brown, burnt umber, burnt sienna. Some of you might still have it, or even just black and red, a little bit more red and black. Or you could put some little color in there on the edge, just so we can see it, what it's doing as it crosses over that dark, the, the dark tree line. We're putting a little bit of color in that tree. 
They're not all the same trees either. Some are a little bit lighter back here. They're a little bit lighter. They're coming across a bit. See how that dries. A little daring, but we'll see how that dries. Looking at my reference, a little bit of brownish tone in here too. There's a little goldy in there, a little orangey into some of these tones. We can't do every branch in here. So this is how you can choose. Right. Again, I'm gonna put this brush and I'm gonna take some of the paint off. Some of you might have tons of paint on your brush. It's a good time to clean it. We're gonna do some of these smaller guys down here too, in the front, the front branches. And this is where you want your brush to be a beautiful wedge um, or to use a smaller brush that has a great wedge. And you see, I'm making sure I'm getting each side of that brush. So it's a sharp, sharp, sharp wedge. If there's no paint coming out, it's sharp. See how sharp that edge? It's gonna give me some really nice sharp lines as long as I can hold them. Now there is one line here and I'm gonna go from here backwards. Sometimes it's easier to go backwards to your source. Uh, there's also a couple guys that are hanging down. I keep ledge, let's go back and pat down that brush. We go back to that ledge. Maybe even got it across that one. And we're going to go a little dark. Let's add some darkness to some of these guys. Once I call them in, just so we can see them. Sometimes I, I feel like Bob Ross. I don't know why. Pretty little trees, happy little trees. The guy I used to watch wasn't Bob Ross. Ross was Alexander. He taught Bob Ross. Short little Ger German guy he was. Alexander, I can't remember his first name. But boy, he, he kind of taught Bob how to be. And uh, he was the first guy. He was a guy I used to watch as a little boy. Um, that kind of inspired me. Because watching as a kid, it was almost like it was magic. Um, watching someone paint. Because all at once it appeared, right? <clears throat> and it, it does have its magic qualities to it, you know? Or once where you had a blank canvas, now it's full of white, emotion. <coughs> so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start to add some purples. And what I might do is actually take the cold red and take my magenta, uh, I'm sorry, my uh, the cold red, the, the magenta, and the ultramarine blue, because they'll make a great purple. Purple's more on the warmer side, so let's help it get to the warmer side. So I got my, I'm going to do a fresh palette. So these plates are great for that. I got them at the dollar store, the local dollar store over by Winners, or the dollar store over by Wasabi Beach, wherever you may be, uh, Dollarama. They're like $4 for 40 I use both sides. And I even sometimes paint over them with, with gray and reuse them again, um, just because I don't really want to put them out into landfills. Uh, you know, um, I ask students to use both sides and if they can use it covered in paint, we paint it gray. Just so a lot of people like gray to paint off gray. They find the white too stark on the eyes and it can, uh, it can bother the, the eyes. Um, anyway, so uh, now we're gonna start putting in some of the, the purples. Okay, uh, we're going to use my magenta. I'm sorry, yeah, the magenta and ultramarine blue. And yes, that's ultramarine blue. And the magenta, and I got some magenta here. So I'm trying to try to be, you know, use the plate, the paint that I have lying around before I've got more tubes. Okay, I got a very, very dark, dark purple, purple, purple. I always stutter on the word purple. <laughs> Sometimes I call it purple in class. Uh, it's funny how certain words you stutter on. Okay, so 
I'm making a shade of purple that I like. Uh, I'm deciding whether it's going to be more on the blue side, a little more on the, on the red side. Um, it's kind of, we also need some more white, some pretty, pretty light, light purple purples as well. So I'm just mixing up my two, my, my darker purple, my lighter purple. And I'm going to start to play with it and just here a bit, around things a bit. Not so much, it's going to be sporadic a bit. Uh, just where the, the purple meets. And let's just soften things, go around the tree a bit. You can always put the tree back, tighten it up a bit. Okay. But if I'm soft and lean, I can, I can work around things. And they kind of look cool. I can even clean objects up that I don't like. Like working a little bit of purple on top or a color on top. The snow is kind of purple in here. And kind of falls. So now I can really show how the snow is falling. Once I put my darks in, I just put a little bit of purple and colors on top. And it just looks like there's color all in there. And I'm not sure if the camera is really bringing in the color, but a little bit of reflection of light. There's a lot of light bouncing around too. And that's why we get these purple tones from all that light reflecting color. So even, that's what's so one, one, even though it gets dark at four o'clock or 4.30 on a, on, a, on, a, on a setting sun night, it, it still feels like the sun doesn't set until about eight or seven. Maybe not eight. And there are you know, dark, dark periods too. February was, was kind of tough for me this year. So I'm putting some purple down into this region here, cleaning it up a bit, leaving some of my blacks. It's texture, snow, meaning probably grit or beach or something. I knew this would be the only part would be a problem with doing here. No, we're getting through it. I'm trying to keep the lines looking like they're cross and coming across. But yeah, I don't, I'm trying to show detail without putting detail in by placing colors side by side. The viewer does have to work a bit, but actually that's not a bad thing. Um, Sometimes when viewers, when the viewer uh, is forced to kind of put things together, uh, it's kind of exciting, you know, and then they start to see things that they didn't notice before. Uh, I have a couple of paintings uh, of friends that I've made and I bought over the years and I look at them and, wow, I can always see something a little different. But, you know, people say that about my, my work, every, every week, everyone's work. Anyway, I'm a little deeper, put, 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 put purple in there. I'm going to go back to my white. I need a lighter purple now than the lighter purple that's being shown. And it's almost on a blue side. I'm trying not, I got to clean my brush. I got blue coming through the back of it. So once in a while, we got to give our brush a good clean. And it's, it's getting there. Okay. Now I got my lighter purple. And Put some lighter purple into here. Good lights coming across. It's beautiful coming from that pink into that purple. Put some lighter purple into here. So as we move further and further along, it is important to match colors. Um, that if I were to put a darker, I don't, I'm trying to finish. And that's what the goal is to finish. I tell my students this all the time. We paint to finish. Um, there are paintings that you will paint, which you'll carry on forever <laughs> because you're challenging yourself. Um, and it gets really depressing unless you have to, to finish a painting means a lot. And I, I, it, it really does. It's, it's great. And um, I'm sure like you, like me, we all have a lot of paintings or work that are, aren't quite finished or we're not really happy with because it, it's, a, it's a growing phenomenon. And, and you need to go through your growing pieces, um, feel the color, feel the form. Um, just take some practice, um, observation, and that's all experience. Um, believe me, I have many, many years ahead of me. <laughs> oh boy, it's exciting because you never stop learning and you always grow. You're always, I'm just working on my palette. You're always growing and growing. And I'm fine now, 
The tone I'm applying is, is pretty light, actually. I don't think you'll even see that. It's a very, very light purple. Um, and I'm just putting it over top of some of the peach. And it just sings with some of the peach. And it gets lighter into here. I can always put some of these trees back. Not a big deal. Um, okay, I got a little bit of a bump here. Got a bump going. Now, this would be another great reference piece for like a long study, uh, maybe a two, three week painting, where you start to play with all these branches and you give yourself a day in the trees, a day in the sky, a day in the lake, you know, a day in the sun. So maybe, maybe a four day, maybe a 40 hour painting. But, you know, it'd be a great thing to go to once this is done because you've gone through all the, the color versions and what's happening and what you don't like and what you do like. It'd be also, it's great to go larger now. Um, these 18 by 24s or 16 by 20 canvases that I can, a lot of times I actually go larger um, uh, when I do my second or my third, because I just want to work out areas, you know, and it's, it's a study, right? And that's really what we're doing here is a study. It's a study to the next painting, to the next painting. And that's how you should look at it. Uh, redoing a second painting, there's, there is no harm in redoing a second painting. Um, that's quite okay. Uh, uh, artists like Michelangelo, Mon Monet, oh my God, Monet did the same flowers over and over and over again. He did, he did settings of his garden. I mean, he had to make his own garden because he couldn't find everything he wanted to paint. I did a whole Sam seminar on, on, on the day. But he would do it in different seasons. So he'd have the same setting, but just in different seasons. And, and boy, oh boy, what a, what a, a beautiful, beautiful work. Um, they're all beautiful. They all had their special moments um, about them. So uh, I'm saying that, that, you know, we can bring that in, into this as well. You know, um, later on, I get into here and start cleaning some of this up a bit. Um, we're still okay with time. It's it's 8, 8.30. Uh, I'm just wondering if anybody has any questions. I just kind of want this painting to dry for a second before I carry on. Uh, Laurie, uh, any questions or anyone wants to show their work? Uh, I recognize some names. Uh, some of them are devoted uh, uh, neighbors and shoppers, and I've known some. Tanya, I've known for decades. Uh, yeah. Cindy, uh, Sandy, I'm not sure. Um, Nina, I'm not sure either. Uh, Greg, I'm not. Willing to turn their camera on and show us if what you're doing. If you're willing. If yeah, you're willing. You don't have to, but we'd love to see. I was just thinking to myself, I bet you there's some beautiful masterpieces out there. and. We're all our, our own. Oh, uh, wow. Hi. I like your background. You're at the beach. Let's see. I'm gonna, Wait. I'm going to change my view. Nina's at the beach. Oh, there's Nina. Yeah. Nina. Nina. Nina Robinson. Sorry, Nina. <laughs> You're mute. You can unmute. There. there we go. Sorry. Um, I'm not a painter at all, but I did enjoy the session and did try to keep up. I'm going to see if I can take my background off and then I will be able to show you my attempt it's a great set is that is that water or snow um that's that, sand that's sand oh yeah. isn't that great yeah so here what is this you say no background okay here we go being very brave here Ta -da. oh that's great oh, stunning i love it that's, that is really good there we go. I had it's a little great. bit of trouble. My snow looks different on either side of my painting, but I'm willing to live with that. Yeah. Try to add a little bit more peach. I was having trouble with the peach. Yes. Very good eye. It's very blue. Um, even some magenta. Peach into magenta. Perhaps. Peach and magenta, there's a um, reaction between peach and magenta. If they're the same hue, they, they vibrate. And it's very exciting to have peach and magenta. You can't really tell from this as much. But yeah. yeah, there's peach and magenta. Yeah, um, I, I think that's, I was having trouble mixing that, um, the purples and the magenta. So I'll certainly yeah. try that. I'm going to get back are, are at it. Are you using different plates or yes. using one palette? Good. Yeah. yeah. If you have one big palette, it's easy to, all at once you rent out of space. Yeah. So, you know, thank yeah, you exactly. very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank, thank you for joining um, us tonight. Yes, thank you. Thank, thank I'm, you. I'm willing, I'm willing to show mine, but um, I'm not able to start my video. It says I've been stopped by the host. So oh, I've been blocked. You'll have to unblock me. Tanya <laughs> Maza. Okay, hang on here. You're blocked. 
Oh. <laughs> um, I think I allow, hang on. Ask to start video there. Did that? Hi, did, how are you? Did that come on? Yep. I see you. I, I, I see you. Okay. Um, Gail's on there. And yeah, Gail. Gail, you're still on mute, but that's, oh, oh, oh Gail, that's great. That's incredible. Wow. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. And just, um, just so everyone knows, when we put this to YouTube, this part will be cut out because everyone's names are up. We keep everything very private. Hmm. So this is just between us, this sharing. Um, it's okay, good that you have somebody can, yeah, who, who can I, edit I can all Put it so that she can open up. Let me just go back to Tanya's video. Us to start video. Did that, Tanya, if you're there, oh, there we go. <laughs> Thanks. Let's I meet myself. <clears throat> oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I don't know how to use other colors, so I ended up using tons of purple because I couldn't figure out how to use the purple stuff. So just <laughs> so everything's purple. <laughs> oh, that's great. Just throw some peach in there. Okay. <laughs> Peach and purple, purple, purple work great. Peach, pink, throw some peach in there. Thank you. Thank really you. Enjoy, I've been really enjoying it. Thanks, Jason. Thank, 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 thanks for coming. I said her too much when I, not painting. <laughs> I'm just blown away with the talent here tonight, especially you, Jason. Uh, Cindy, oh, uh, any chance you'll show us yours? And why yeah. if you don't? <laughs> um, if you can hear me, can you hear yes. me? Yes, I can. I, I kind of got behind and I got so fascinated on watching what he was doing. I kind of stopped painting to listen and watch. <laughs> which, which is okay. Which but is okay. I'm so good. It's, uh, it's going to be on YouTube. And so I am going to do the, you know, one day, a couple hours on the trees, a couple hours on the, and then I'll have a masterpiece. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, you know what? It's very uh, such a nice thing to do. It's so relaxing, and and it just makes me want to try it again because I know where I could improve and that sort of thing. I don't know if other people found that, but um, yeah, actually, it's really, a great idea. really enjoyed the process. I want to thank That's you so much, idea. Jason, yeah. and we'll do it again. And also, um, feel free, everyone, to go to Jason's store and purchase some supplies if you want to upgrade. Of course, we make our programs thank free, you. <laughs> but um, you are allowed to. Uh, you know, promote yourself and your business. And you have a wonderful business right across the street from the library. Um, and he's so talented, as you know, and can guide you in the right direction. So please use Jason's store. And for our next, um, any other times, then you can go onto our website and retry this with maybe some new paints and brushes. And and uh, yeah, I really appreciate everybody coming tonight. And some of these brushes I'm using are $2.40. There you go. That's so affordable. So yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it makes me want to get a nice proper set for myself as well. But they're brand new. So they give me all the great edges. Um, unfortunately, acrylic is hard on brushes. So you do go through brushes. For that. Okay, let's, but it's such a fun activity. So um, is there anything else? Are we sort of ready to wrap up? What do you think now, Jason? Uh, well, we still have, well, we're 832. I'm concerned with you leaving work. <laughs> and uh, I know you want us to wrap up a little early. The only thing I could think of is, uh, looking at the camera, uh, I don't see as much peach down as, as I actually put down. And the next thing I was I was going to do is put a, a little bit of a high, uh, 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 the strong white high, 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 highlight in the river here. And uh, yeah, and then put some, but it's, you know, it's, it really depends on folks if they can, they want to hang around and watch me just finish it off in the next 10, 10 minutes. Yeah, uh, that, that sounds perfect. And, is, uh, is that okay? That's and perfect. Then, yeah. And if you want to hang around, you can. You can always exit if you're wrong. You just leave. Or you can, you can watch me finish. Whatever you I want. We'll be here for another 10 minutes. And thank you all. And I'm just going to continue painting. And okay. thank you, uh, all, all of you, for, 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 for coming. And what a great way to have a class on a terrible day. Eh? Yeah. Uh, this day. I think uh, Cindy has a question for you. And she's unmuted. So go ahead, Cindy. Do you put a sealer on your painting when you're done? Yes. Uh, I, it's to bring out the color. Uh, I usually use a Krylon spray for acrylics. Um, my favorite spray I use is Camar, K-A-M-A-R, and it's an aerosol spray. It's very quick. One can will probably do about 20, 30 paintings if you 
work it light. You don't need a lot of spray on it. You do three seconds, put it flat in the ground, stand about three feet above it or two feet above it, spray back and forth really quickly. Uh, let it sit for 45 minutes until it dries to the opposite direction. Uh, make sure the spray is nice and even. Um, and it, it's it's great. It, it, a lot of a lot of people I know who sell their work use the spray on top. You see, um, if you look at ultramarine blue, uh, when it dries, it's it's very dull. It's very matte. Uh, the cads can be very very shiny. Uh, magenta can be flatter than the cads. So when you look at the surface of the painting, you have flat and shiny areas kind of responding. And, and it, it's nice to have a unified look. Uh, some people also do pore mediums on top, like gel, uh, glazes, anything that will dry clear. Uh, a lot of the tri art materials I, I have will dry clear. The one thing that really won't dry clear, and I just mentioned, which was a no no, is glazing. Glazing medium is not a good top coat. It actually has a little bit of yellow in it, have you ever noticed? Uh, but that's still what we use. Uh, in, that's a whole different tech techniques I'm talking about. But even just clear gel. Uh, semi-gloss or, or uh, satin finish gel, uh, whatever brand you're buying, just put a coat of it over top. It will make everything common and it's very, very nice. It will also help with refraction of light and will hold light against the surface of the painting a little bit longer so the painting will glow a bit. It will glow more. Uh, it's, uh, and we've all seen the, the glass finishes where you look, it looks like glass over top, but yet it, it's just a surface, it's a, a resin. Uh, that's also being done too, but those, the resin scratch. So I know it's a big answer to a short question, <laughs> but there's a lot of different angles. Uh, but thanks for asking that, that, that question. I'm gonna go back in, into my white areas now, and I'm just gonna add a look. It's amazing how adding a couple of, hi of, of highlights here and there can make a world of difference, because um, it just pops things out. Uh, there's not any, there's hardly any white in here at all. Uh, I've kind of covered most of the, of the, of the canvas with uh, with either peach, gray, or, or yellow. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put some highlights of white in. Now, to be quite honest, this is one of my favorite ways of painting. If you can do a painting in two hours, that's a great painting. Because there, are, I, I know I have paintings that I haven't finished in 20 years. <laughs> They're still sitting over there. Or, uh, or in my home studio. Because finishing work is, is very important. So if you can sit down and say, okay, I'm gonna do this in two phases. One phase is two hours. The next day I wake up and I spend another hour on it, touching it up, making it come to life. Um, that's making it its own thing. Uh, you know, looking at the reference to a point, well, I don't want my river. I want my river to go this way instead of that way. Or I made it that way. So let's make it work tomorrow. So some of you that you're all set up for tomorrow, Spend an hour, just do a couple of touch-ups on, on, on it. Um, when, when you're a little bit more awake, it's not so late at night. That's another thing I'm, I'm grateful is for everyone showing up because it, it is kind of late at night to, to be working. I actually like early morning or late night painting. Um, I, I used to wake up every night uh, and start my day at, at, at one o'clock and I'd paint until six. And then I'd sleep for a few hours, wake up at three in the afternoon. This is when I painted full time and I had to get work done. Uh, I found that it was easier to paint at night when everyone fell asleep, <laughs> you know? Um, and there wasn't as much noise in the world, I guess. But I was living downtown Toronto in those days. And, um, it's, it's loud, <laughs> but uh, the city's always moving. So I'm just adding a few high highlights here and there, you know? Just to try to get it, you know, try to get a little bit lighter in spots. There's parts where this kind of reflects the whole thing back. Right, watch it these trees. I can put dark through that part again. Okay. A little bit of a highlight in the water. Uh, just off the top of my head. I'm going to add a little bit more peach in there. Just so I can control that high highlight a little bit. Another hue in there as well. Okay. So it's there, it's not there, it's soft, as hard edges, soft edges, you know, it's reflecting some of the light off the sun. Okay. The sun has, doesn't have a harder edge at the bottom. 
I need to circle the sun. The sun is, is just making itself known just by itself. Um, yeah, I got my purples in there. Good. So let's go back. And I, I jump around as I'm trying to finish. I'm going to go to a smaller brush, my dollar seventy-five brush. I'm going to try to put a little more peach into the hill here, uh, peachy white. So I'm mixing up some peach, just a bit. But I think this hill is a little bit peachier. I'm just. I have some white marks I can just go over. It's my peach in there. Now it's interesting how we have different names for the reds, peach, pink, light red, dark red, cad, but with blues, they're either cold or warm. There's no light blue. There's no other way of describing light blue than light blue. <laughs> probably because we're peach color people. So if we were blue color people, we probably have different colors, different names for different shades of light, light blue, like peach and pink, you know? That's just the thing I just came up with. <laughs> okay, so, so on some planet that has blue people, they have other names for the light blues, you know? And they're probably saying, what's pink? What's peach? We won't see those tones. Stronger, stronger thing. Just a few high highlights in there and there. Okay, I'm gonna put some of these trees back. I'm gonna go back to my dark, jump it around. Put some texture in that tree. Put this in my marks going across, dark. It's a darker gray, I'm just going up the tree a bit, create some texture. My brush is rather dry, so I'm just laying some color out once in a while. So it looks kind of patchy, go across a bit. There's also a lot of branches over in here. Like tomorrow morning, I'd, I'd come back and put some more branches back in here. Put some more branches coming through here. Maybe a few more branches up, up there, you know. It also looks better on, on camera than it does in real life. <laughs> you gotta be careful if you're buying work on, on, on online because it can look dramatically different online. The, the television, the camera kind of blends things to, together and uh, you don't see the, the, the contrast is subtle, is subtle with, 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 with the camera versus the human eye. It's a little different. I think I think the camera is designed to make everything look a little better, better color-wise, or it makes color choices for us. I'm gonna make a little bit lighter snow here, have some contrast, pull up these trees a bit. Got some shadows going on, got some a little bit lighter going in here, soften some of this up, a little bit softer. And I've got some shadow lines in there in a second. So it's a, it's a painting. So we're making a, a painting, we're making a painterly version of this for the for, for, for photograph. Right? I'm very close to, to, to the piece, so sometimes I need just to stand back and Get to get away from it a bit and to look at look at it from a distance and uh, you know make some quick decisions about some highlights. You know, I don't mind the fact that that comes across and kind of lose that. The light is good in there. You know, I could do more work with the trees here. Just little things, just to clean it, clean up 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 a bit. I usually clean things up the next the next day because then I can throw a few more trees in. You know, this looks so much lighter when it when it's wet, but as soon as it dries, it'll you won't even really notice it. Going up and down, just scraping some shapes, adding some texture of tree, 
So that the skill is to make is to give the texture, to make it look like the texture of the forest. Um, you know, because textures are <laughs> is really what is what we're 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 we're, we're painting. Thus, that's why the land's drawn flat. The trees are growing up, so we paint up upwards. The snow is moving around. I'm going to put some highlights in some of that snow now. And I'm just going to use a little bit of a soft gray, probably a 10% to 20% gray. Because white would be too too dramatic. I'm going to throw some highlights. Yeah. I put these trees back when they uh, some of these ones back. The impressionist move, move, move movement is what we really are painting here. is very impressionistic. Um, it's really our our template for painting uh, in Canada is very impressionistic. The group of seven, we're, we're doing it. It's what we know, uh, the idea of shapes. Um, painting shapes, don't paint every individual leaf. Uh, paint the shapes of the individual leaves put to, 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 to together. Um, that's very group of seven orientated. The, the, the English, which, you know, we're from Europe, most of us, you know, the art world is from Europe and Canada. Um, uh, every country has its own, own style. It's kind of nice. Every country has its own impressionism. Uh, I mean, every country, <laughs> you know, which is special to, to their, their way of thinking about the world. Um, their color scheme, uh, the French with the, the Monet and the, the strong strokes, the English, English are a little deeper and darker in tunnels. The English love greens. They love the deep greens. Um, think of Turner, for example. So there's so many different ways to interpret art. I'm, I'm going to say that it's at a point now where I, I'm going to let it sit until t t tomorrow. Um, we're, uh, so thank you. Uh, this is what I'm left with at the end. Um, and uh, from there, I clean some, some of the things up. But it's a, it's a good stopping point. And thank you.